do commonly. We'll open with Selectman's liaison reports, open for public comment, if any. Hear from the town manager. In terms of prepared discussion this evening, we'll hear a driveway waiver on the subject of 90 to 92 Green Street. We'll have a discussion on the Board of Health. We'll uh, preview the warrant for November's town meeting. We'll get an update on senior tax relief. I, I saw a preview. It looks, um, looks like it's really latching. Uh, we'll talk about demand fees as it relates to um, revenues. I'm sorry. No. We'll talk about demand fees on another phone right. The, the revenue side discussion comes around as part of the train depot and compo shared sticker discussion. Um, We'll extend, or at least I'll propose to extend, the sunset for the uh, HRAC. And then we'll get to the um, a quick survey on the uh, Board of Selectmen um, survey update. I haven't heard, so I'm anxious to see what. That's the one on the override? Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. So with that, I'll turn to my right and uh, open for a Selectman liaison's report. John? Um, actually, I don't have a liaison report, but I did visit CPDC last night. Mm -hmm. um, and the. Uh, post office project was um, front and center and uh, quite an impressive um, I, I, I mean I thought that the presentation which was probably about a half hour long and finished with a walkthrough video of what it's going to look like oh really it's really spectacular <laughs> they addressed all of the issues that um, had been raised previously um, by you know mass historic and you know reading historic um, matter of fact sign offs along the way um, I was struck with the CPDC members um, the first comment was wow um, which was really you know heartwarming to me um, I know Barry was there and probably has his own thoughts on it but I, I think we were pretty much on one page about the fact that this is the beginning of what we've been working towards in the economic development. Exactly. Exactly. Um, there was some estimation um, from the developer that uh, in single fee, one-time revenues to the town, uh, over 200000 225 the estimated tax annual revenues in the range of about four fifty, all of which is great, but <coughs> frankly, I think with what town meeting did in expanding the smart growth, 50 new families, literally living right in, in the center of town, is the, I call it the keystone. It kind of yeah, unlocks, yeah. you know, so much other <laughs> development. So it was very exciting to me. And although I'm not a liaison to CPDC, I felt like I wanted to go. Good. It was a great report. Yeah, no, it was, um, I mean, we've gone to so many of these things, and so many of these things, it's a battle. You know, the developer wants more for less. Um, you know, the designs are not, you know, really well done, and we're fighting tooth and nail all the way. This one, I mean, it had its, it had its starts and stops, um, but, you know, when we sat down two years ago to sort of figure out, okay, let's create an economic development plan, this project is sort of the poster child of what we sort of envisioned. It's the other side of... Haven Street anchors the other side of Haven Street, creates a lot of excitement around Newman Street. Um, it was really well, uh, you know, well um, designed. Um, it's not intrusive. Um, it's pretty. Um, so, um, you know, I was expecting tons and tons of questions from CPDC, and the, you know, a lot of the questions were just sort of minor and technical. Um, the stat, the, the team is a, is a, is a well put together team. They're pros. Um, and I think we're going to be really happy with this outcome. So, um, could you just characterize the nature of the developments? For those yeah. Things? So yeah. basically, um, it's the old post office. So they're keeping essentially the front, uh, you know, the post office piece of, um, you know, what is you know those nice facade, you know, the columns. Yeah. It really gives it its its beauty. Um, there'll be two sort of commercial extensions on either side of that, and then there'll be 50 units of housing that are kind of stepped. So um, I think it's maybe, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head, but there's 50 units total. 20% um, will be affordable. Mm -hmm. It'll be home ownership, not rental. Right. Um, they'll be mostly- 15 uh, one bedrooms, 30, 35 30, two bedrooms. Yeah, two, yeah, two, two bedrooms. bedrooms. So, um, so not a huge, you know, not, not huge families. There'll be a right. penthouse 
um, which will be really stepped back. I think they'll be the larger units. And from the diagrams that they had, the only place that you could, so it'll be tall, but it won't feel tall. Right. The only place that you'll be able to see those penthouses from is if you walk down to the Congregational Church on Woven Street and you look up, you'll, you'll see a little sliver of the penthouses. But when you're standing on top of it, it's really not going to look massive for what it really is going to be. Especially it's really from designed. the front of the building. I mean, yep. when you, if you stand... Um, let's say you walked across the street from the current post office mm -hmm. and looked up, you'd see a little peak of, you know, uh, of units, but it's, it's not one of these that comes out to the sidewalk and, right. uh, doesn't build know, to the lot and line. goes to the lot line. Uh, the so. other piece of this too is that, you know, just from our meetings with, uh, with the Lincoln Street where we're struggling on parking, um, they're proposing uh, a 1.44 per, uh, per unit parking the majority of which will be um, underground. So, you know, and, and that's actually, they don't need a waiver for that. That that goes above and beyond even in the guidelines. Yeah. So yeah. I think a lot of the sort of uh, uh, parking issues will be mitigated. There'll be hopefully some, you know, envisioned like a, a nice restaurant. So, you know, there'll be, your tra you know, traditional sort of traffic concerns, but it's bringing life down there. And that's mm -hmm. exactly Outdoor dining, and, and, yeah. you know, when, as the seasons permit. Oh, outdoor dining. I mean, there, there will be a small, there, out next to the driveway, if you think about the driveway next to the, you know, where the mm -hmm. employees used to park, yeah. um, there's a build out to the sidewalk. And it's, yeah. I don't know if it's going to be a coffee shop, I don't know yeah. if it's going to be a retail, it's going to be, it's designed commercial. But the roof of it is at the level of the post office, so you'll be able nice. to walk out of there the idea would be a restaurant to outdoor yeah. dining nice looking over it's Haven really Street. good i mean it's really something it's not you know i, I think it's something <laughs> that we're going to be proud of so well it'd be good to, to fill that void up it's been an empty shell for a while and this will be a bit of an anchor tenant um, on the other end of haven street right good so, if i might uh, just to add on that i think it's important that this this developer didn't come to town and try to see what he could get away with this developer lives in town and yeah. wanted to do it right right from the beginning so he spent an inordinate amount of time and resources up front where some developers may not have. Um, and you know that's almost a recipe for a better project most of the time. I would say over half of the, his team is our Reading residents. You know, yeah. um, Reading architect, Reading attorney, or you know, um, obviously, you know, he's been in Reading and four of his boys have gone through, you know, the Reading school system. And his partner is in Linfield, um, long established over yeah. decades, really. I mean, his company's been in business now into their third generation. Um, so This will also, I think, um, form for the town organs to review these a basis to compare others coming forward, because you'll see what preparation and diligence give you, and you'll be able to better assess when something's come up short. Okay? Yes, uh, that's true. Uh, well, I've attended uh, every Board of Health meeting in the last three months, including uh, one of their executive sessions in August. Uh, we will be discussing that issue later tonight, so I won't dwell on the subject matter of wh what's been discussed there. Um, had a discussion over the summer with the chair of RMLD, and I think you have done the same right. in email. Uh, we're trying to get them off dead center on this issue of uh, CPI for the annual payment to the town of Reading. Right. And I believe an emissary will visit them shortly to right. we need discuss to, this. We quarter. need to return back to the enthusiasm and agreement that was apparent at town meeting. So we'll, we'll get there. An emissary will visit them shortly. <laughs> From the east. <laughs> From the east. <laughs> That's all I have. Barry, anything else? Um, and, well, in addition to the, uh, the CPTC meeting, which uh, we just talked about, um, uh, Dan and, and Andy and myself, we attended um, uh, executive session um, on building security we had last week so just to kind of to re rehab rehash that so you may recall that in April town meeting 2016 town meeting approved that we spend one hundred twenty five thousand dollars for the purpose of undertaking a comprehensive and thorough study um, of our building security for both town and schools um, and as a result of that appropriation we engaged the firm of TRC solutions to complete a really comprehensive physical and operational study of our not only the facilities but our you know our, our security operation <coughs> practices and you know for the last year or so the uh, members of that firm are meeting with the school town public safety officials library 
um, and they act, and they did a sort of walkthrough of all of our buildings. And last week, um, uh, in executive session, members of the uh, of our board, school committee, library trustees, um, uh, public safety uh, facilities, uh, we met in executive session to hear an update from the consultant uh, and determine what our next steps are going to be in this process. And um, I, you know, over the next few months, the, um, Bob and and Dr. Doherty, the chief of police, and other officials were going to—they're going to design a plan for town meeting to consider uh, on some capital requests for implementation of some of the recommendations that they have uh, put forth. So, both just on the capital side and on sort of the ongoing operational side. So, um, it was a pretty in-depth report. We didn't do a grant, you know, really deep dive at the meeting in terms of what was discussed, but you know, sort of, um, uh, you know, nominated our you know town staff to actually go and look through and come up with some options that would be both capital and some ongoing operational stuff. Well, so more to come on that and, um, you know, just, um, but, you know, you know a, a, good, a good first step at that. How long did the meeting go to? About an hour and a half. Yeah, it was pretty, yeah. Um, you know, they did, a, they did a pretty thorough job in terms of that. Mr. Chairman, uh, one other comment, I don't think this breaches any protocols. Uh, one of the things they did say is R Reading is a safe town compared to other places they look at. Uh, we rate a 35 when some cities and towns around us are up in the hundreds. The higher it is, the worse you are in terms of ambient crime. So these studies are all done in the context of the ambient safety levels. You know, your relative risk is determined. This is based on, I'm guessing, publicly available data. Yes. The crunch through. Okay. Yeah, they, Thank they you, crunch all that. So uh, more to come on that, obviously, yeah. as they plow through a very vo voluminous report. Good. So, thank you, Mr. Andy. So, I, I was at the executive session as well and got the same take home messages that um, Barry and Dan uh, just mentioned. And, and I, I want to echo what Dan said because I think it's, it's really a key message that needs to go out. And, and Bob was, we were discussing this. Reading is a pretty safe town. This is not about, uh, it's, it's about making it a, even, even a safer town. So um, I, I, that was the take, one of the big take homes for me. I um, also attended a res, re, uh, in a climate advisory committee meeting where they uh, were, were in past, this past week, where they worked to incorporate comments that were made by town council and the bylaw committee. Mm -hmm. And they're packaging, packaging that up for the warrant in okay. September. Um, and uh, you know, it's a challenge writing any good, tight, concise regulations. I think they're, they, they're, they're coming along well. I missed the town forest committee meeting because it was the night of our executive session, and I have yet to catch up with the uh, chair of that group and, and find mm -hmm. out what went on. I will, and I'll, re I'll report back next week. Uh, I wanted to make a comment. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not a, unfortunately, it's a, it's a, it's a rather sad comment, but I, last week, you know, we all learned that there was another swastika found uh, uh, outside uh, off school property on a fence near, and I think this is maybe the fourth or fifth one in the past uh, few months. So I, I just wanted to say that, that I am uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very disturbed about this defamation of school property. I know you all are in town properties with swastikas. Um, it's, it's uh, you know, words can't describe uh, how bad that symbol is, really, and uh, it, it's just—it's not—I don't—it's not welcome in town. It's not consistent with our values. So, in in, in that regard, I'm very—I was very pleased to hear that the uh, Human Relations Advisory Committee and local clergy, I think, have got a plan, a townwide response planned um, coming up soon, which is is good, and I hope that you know if these things happen. Hopefully they don't, but if they crop up in the future, that we can respond with uh, some speed and, and quickly say, you know, this is not what Reading's all about. So that's it. Thank you, Andy. We're a little bit ahead of time for a 720 start. So um, I have nothing to report. I want to thank Barry for taking the helm last week. I was unavoidably on business travel. So thank you for taking over. Um, we're about five minutes ahead, so if you gentlemen will. Uh, public comment. I'm sorry, public comment. Or Bob, right? Oh, Bob's after that. Bill. Uh, Bill Brown, uh, Bill Brown's way in Mountain Road. Uh, by the way, uh, you had an opportunity to go into the Middlesex County Registry of Deeds, and they do have a copy of the original deed for Memorial Park. Uh, in, in 19, 
there was a waiver to allow the town to build a swimming pool there on the uh, gift of uh, Ethel Grant. And the same year they went to court and had that waiver so they could build it eventually at the high school. So uh, it is there. I gave Ray the initial things and I think it's pretty much as I stated the town meeting. cemetery board, uh, we have two people getting their uh, applications in late, and I don't know if you could do anything tonight, but it would be appreciated to appoint them because we won't have a quorum for next week if we don't. Uh, Paula Peck had some uh, physical problems. She could not get hers in, and then uh, uh, I can't think of the name, uh, the other young lady is these are both incumbents or can they No, the other one's no. Uh, uh, Blodgett, Virginia Blodgett. I, mean, I think you sure. know. Sure, sure. Sure. And I would appreciate it if you could nominate them tonight so we can get them in. What was the other name, Bill? Huh? Virginia Blodgett. Virginia Blodgett. Yeah. The other one is Paul Peck. Do we, have, do we have the resumes and the applications? Well, Paul Peck has been here for a good many years, and I think yeah. you know Virginia Blodgett. From, yeah. I think the resumes aren't on. I, Bob, formally, don't they have to actually apply before we appoint them? Yes. Yeah. Otherwise, it's called drafting. <laughs> <laughs> we do have the reappointment paperwork for Olive, and we do have an uh, application sure. from what, what happens is that... Uh, they, were, they were after you guys did your appointment. Okay. Mary Vincent uh, right. retired from the board, and she didn't tell the town clerk that she was resigning. She just yeah. moved out of town. And she now Mary was a long-serving member, I believe, yeah, she Bill. Was. She was a long -serving 25 years, was it? Something like that, yeah. She moved up to New Hampshire with her okay. daughter and so on. It'd be nice if we could issue her a certificate. I, I think it would be great. Right. Okay. And I don't know if you guys look for employees, but uh, Billy uh, Jordan is retiring this week, too. After yeah. many years the can, can your business wait till your next meeting? I, I think that would be uh, the preferred route. You know. When we is your meeting? Because we only have three members right now. Yeah. When, when is your meeting? When's your next meeting? Uh, we are scheduled for the fifth. Okay. I'd be inclined to go the process and not try to yeah. run this well, through. Otherwise, you set a terrible precedent. I mean, I, 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 you know, it's for these two, I would make the exception, yeah. but then, you know, yeah. it's. We, it's yeah, 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 no. it just doesn't know both. We now have no pressing uh, issues. Yeah. I mean, as a question, is there something that you need to get done next Tuesday? It would be nice. It it's, would a, be nice. it's a nice to have. Nice yeah. to have. Uh, Dan, you and I can convene there. Or, you want to do it offline, maybe on the fifth, we can sit together. Oh, yeah, we can get it together for our next meeting, sure. Yeah. All right. It's not about the we can't people. Do it tonight. It's about the process. It's about the process. Yeah. Um, no harm in asking. I understand. <laughs> Thank you. Anything else, Bill? No, that's it. For Thank what, you. what year was Memorial Park uh, deeded originally? Uh, 1917, and Ray still got my title report. So. And you've got a copy of that deed as well? <laughs> Uh, That's a hint. He will, there is a copy oh, right here. Okay. He's welcome to it. All right. And it's identically to the wording on the uh, dedication on the inside, except it gives the dimensions and everything else. Right. Yeah. And, Very good. Uh, I can read it to you if you'd like. No, no, that's fine. I, I, I Thank you. you have to read the paper. I have no doubt you could recite it from memory. So. And also in uh, 53, uh, they waived the conditions of building the swimming pool at the uh, Memorial Park. Eventually got built up at the high school 10 years later. And it goes to my theory, it takes 10 years to get anything done to Ray. So. Thank you, Bill. Bob? Right. I'm sorry, any other public comment? Bob. Uh, thank you, John. I have one thing that I want to ask town council to update you on the second thing. Uh, first is just a brief update on the North Reading MWRA situation. Uh, John Arena and Dan Enzinger have served as selectman liaisons for a few years now. It's, it feels like almost three years in this. Um, the best summary I can give, we just had a meeting at North Reading last week that you were both unable to attend, is that uh, North Reading has hit the pause button. They are reevaluating uh, options given to them by Andover to remain with Andover. Um, we have put a great deal of time and effort into this. Uh, Andover's initial comment to the board in North Reading three years ago is we physically do not have the capacities to store, to provide water that you need 
now or for the future for economic development. They have a different story now. They're saying they didn't fully understand the question before. Parentheses, rates might go up 20% or 25% if they leave. So it's a very complex situation. It's a tough decision for North Reading. Uh, we agreed last week that, you know, until we heard from them further, we were just going to push back also. Well, they have already purchased uh, property and everything yeah. else. They have spent a significant amount of money. Of dollars. Bob, do we have any sunk costs in this project yeah. that we can recover? Um, if it proves we've we've sent them forward. an $8,500 invoice they haven't paid yet for water that we did a test for them. Other than that, yes, we do, and it's a sunk cost. Yeah, other than it's being a good neighbor. We have much more of time used than actual costs. Okay. Um, there's a couple of examples where we put in larger pipes, water mains, than we would have. Mm -hmm. There's no real harm in that. The additional cost was marginal compared to digging up the road and putting in the pipe. Which you were doing anyway, right? Which but we were doing anyway. Yes, I mean, that doesn't mention that over the course of the last three years, because I, yeah. I was doing that yes. for, the, for you know, um, when you were two chair. of those years. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. We filled the room with all of our top management people, tied them up in preparation for hours, and then in the meetings, and it happened on several occasions. I mean, yes, um, we've attended besides some. The fact, we've are you attended a couple me that of their some town cost is, is unrecoverable. Yes, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> nothing's impossible. Mm -hmm. I, I what I represented to North really Reading was that. To me. We were engaged in the spirit of being a good neighbor. They've helped us out in other things. We're trying to help them out in this thing. Um, other than employees' time, and I don't mean to mi minimize that, we did no significant capital costs uh, that we true? spent because if, if they weren't doing it, we didn't yeah. dig up a road that we otherwise wouldn't have. Is, yeah. is it true that Andover may now be able to meet some of their sewer That needs? is what they say. Uh, well, the water, they're saying yes, and the sewer, they're willing to put it on the table. Yeah. So I, I totally so understand. River Rose, is that what happened? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, see. I understand the North Reading selectmen are in a difficult position, and it's probably a right thing for them to pause. Yeah, oh, sure. I think it's next week they're going to formally vote whether to actually hit the pause button in public loud, more loudly than they already have or whether to abandon Andover. And I couldn't give you odds okay. on that, but I just wanted to give you that update. Yep. And then I'd ask Ray to update you on a historic district commission historical committee uh, <coughs> item that the, will need to come to the board. Okay, so this has to do with um, uh, the Criterion um, uh, Child Care Center uh, on Summer Ave. Uh, that was the subject, you may recall, of um, a certificate that was issued by the historic district commission uh, some time ago. <laughs> One of the conditions of that certificate was that um, the uh, owner of the property execute a historic preservation restriction, which is a deed restriction that that um, obligates the owner of the property to maintain the historic integrity of the building. Um, so we spent a fair amount of time last spring negotiating with the owner over what the terms of that would be, and this um, um, th this restriction is a little different from um, the ones that you often see because um, the Historical Commission and the Historic District Commission both agreed that the Historic District Commission should take the lead in, in enforcing it since they are also enforcing the certificate and the terms and conditions of the certificate rather than have two different boards um, um, uh, overseeing this project and, and potentially coming to different conclusions. So, uh, so we, we drafted it that way. Uh, one of the things that is necessary um, for a historic uh, uh, preservation uh, restriction is that it has to be approved by the Mass Historical Commission. So we sent out the Mass Historical Commission and they weren't very happy. Um, and um, they said, oh no, it has to be enforced by the Historical Commission. And oh, by the way, we want the um, Board of Selectmen to formally vote to accept the deed restriction. Um, so uh, we uh, gave them some pushback on that. Uh, in particular, you don't have the authority to accept a, yeah, a right. uh, yes, historical uh, 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 preservation restriction it would have to go to town meeting to get authorized, so everything would be delayed until 
you know, some future town meeting. And um, in any case, we didn't see the need for it since both the Historical uh, Commission and the Historic District Commission have statutory authority to, to hold restrictions of this site and don't need town meeting authority. Uh, and so after, um, after some debate back and forth, uh, the Mass Historical has um, backed off some, uh, but they want the document to show that you have voted to approve the restriction. Um, so you're not accepting it, which would require a time to vote. You're simply approving, uh, uh, approving the agreement, which I don't think you need to do, but this would play case. It's just the terms of surrender. That's right. <laughs> Why are they so, asking for yeah, that? I mean, yeah. what, what authority is that can confer that is not already there? <laughs> Why you're having a you're having approved it? I don't think it has any legal significance at all. So what's so what, what, what are they? It's relatively low friction just to get it done. Because um, I guess they they want to know that the selectmen um, uh, have are not objecting to. Oh. It was, it was a selectman that helped negotiate this thing. <laughs> wants to be right? Is that really what we're saying? Or it's a CYA? I would never say that publicly. <laughs> oh, uh, <I> <laughs> but, but in any case, um, right. uh, so th they want this to come, uh, th they, they want the document to show that you have approved the acquisition of this, even though you don't have any authority to accept it. No blood, no foul. And, in the oversight by the Historical District Commission. This is a basically an acknowledgement more than anything else. Exactly that 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 this is the, the that this is okay with you. Yeah, I read this right. today. So. Okay, so um, I think the the best way to make this happen is to convene a joint meeting uh, of the Historical Commission, the Historic District Commission, during a Board of Selectmen's meeting. Yeah. So everybody can vote to execute the document. And <coughs> One and done. And um, the uh, um, so the the last changes are being drafted now to reflect that. And the hope is that in one of your meetings in September, uh, you can get that on your agenda and we can take care of Good. it. And um, mm -hmm. and and this long drama can yeah. come to an end. Criterion is the owner now. They, they have fast payers. Yes. Okay. So. Thank you. Anything else, Bob? No, thank you. Okay. With that, I think we have a public hearing. Yes. Uh, to the inhabitants of the town of Reading, please take notice that the Board of Selectmen of the town of Reading will hold a public hearing on August 29, 2017, at 720 p.m. in the Selectmen's Meeting Room, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Massachusetts, on a request from the property owner to waive the driveway regulations at 90 to 92 Green Street. A copy of the proposed document regarding this topic is available in the town meeting, town manager's office, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Mass, Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 7.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. and Tuesday from 7.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. and is attached to the hearing notice on the website, www.readingma.gov. All interested parties are invited to attend the hearing or may submit their comments in writing or by email prior to 6 p.m. on August 29, 2017. Thank you, Dan. Uh, is Mr. Bergendahl here? Why don't you come on up to the front? We can hear you on the yeah, if microphones. Yeah, I could give the board a little background before Tom speaks. Um, <clears throat> the PTTF, whatever we're called, uh, met in August to discuss this, and I just want to call to the board's attention, um, which was in your packet, um, four driveways and a single property, two is permitted, and so forth. And um, specifically, the PTTF uh, offered <coughs> That, um, that what he's proposing is fine. There was some um, modifications along the way, but from a public safety standpoint and from all the other folks uh, as part of the PTTF, that uh, Tom's current suggestion in front of you was acceptable to us, and I wanted to make sure you knew that before Tom started. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I'm Tom Bergendahl, developer of 1992 Green Street, and asking for permission to put the driveways in as specified in the uh, PTTF's uh, memo. Um, there will be one combined, that is two driveways to sharing the same entrance on Green Street, and then another one adjacent to it. So basically, um, two curb cuts 
on Green Street, but three driveways on Green Street, and one around the corner on Elliott Street. Um, Why don't you go up, Tom? Can, sure. Can, can, can you rotate that? <laughs> Not easily. <laughs> just, just go under view, rotate counterclockwise. Top, top. I'm just going to go 50 50. Is that good or bad? No, you got to go the worse, other worse. Yeah. Just keep going. I think either way now works. But you have to do it twice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. okay. How's that? Thank you. So, what, what we have or what we're proposing is the driveway closest to the lot line will be a single car driveway. Um, Engineering would like us to bring it down. It's, I think it's currently listed at 13 feet wide. I'm fine with shrinking it down to 12 if that, if that is uh, what the engineering department would like. Um, then the other two driveways on Green Street are basically combined. I think there's a bull nose in here that separates the two driveways. Um, and then the final driveway is over <coughs> on Elliott Street. Um, basically as, as far from the corner as we could get it. Um, it will be straddling a, um, a sewer or a, a catch basin. Engineering is, you know, they, they basically gave my uh, engineering company the, the sort of details on how they'd like it reconfigured when we, when we get to that phase of it. Um, so I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, so I'm, I'm asking for relief because it's more driveways than is allowed. Um, the, the units themselves are three bedrooms, two and a half bathrooms. Um, <coughs> smaller units, 12 to 1300 square feet per unit. Um, three, again, facing Green Street, one facing Elliott Street. So four units in total? Four units in total. Um, and let's see. I'm, if you have questions, I'd be happy. So there's only two allowed by code, is that the right? Yes, yeah. right. You need four because you've got four units. Because they have four units. And they all each go into a separate garage, is that from what I they can see? They all have, that? yes, one, one car, car garage. garage. The uh, bullnose on Green Street, what, what's the continuation of that in the driveway? Nothing? It just it disappears into the it's, sidewalk? It's all of like a foot and a half, I mean. Okay. Yeah, so it takes part of the 22 feet wide that you're asking and reduces right. it? And reduces it, yes. Okay. Yeah. And, then, and then sidewalks, what we're planning on doing is the sidewalk from the lot line all the way around to basically the end of this driveway. And if, were it not for the um, tree, the, the maple that's on the, uh, the, the town's property, um, I would continue the sidewalk. But my guess is if we were to continue yeah, that, the tree. we'd be destroying the roots of the tree and, and basically you could just take it down because it's going right. to go. There are sidewalks already that you're essentially There replaced. are no sidewalks now. Okay. Um, and then the other thing that, that PTTF requested was um, handicap, handicap compliant sure. here, and then we'll do one across the street as well. Yep. The only question I had is on page one of Ryan's notes, he's, he makes the point of saying the existing catch basin conflicts with utilities are not allowed. And on the following page, he says it's not a major concern. And I, and I accept that he's, he's come to grips with it. I'm just curious, how did it come from you can't do it to it's fine? Any idea? I guess nobody. I, I is think that the it's one on the uh, Elliott Street. That's, that's right, it's, it's basically right there. Yeah. Um, that's a good question. I, as far as I know, it's just the catch basin there. Um, okay. and, and maybe it's just, in general, the, the regulations are no catch basins and drive combined. Yeah. It's, it's a moot point. He's already, he's already judged it fine. I'm just curious how he did a, he did a 180. <laughs> Any other questions from the board? Yeah, I, I, Tom, can you describe what's wh who your abutters are? Sure. Um, and and are are there any curb cuts there, or we're just are you just showing the ones on your property? There. Um, let's see. First, the first question is abutters, uh, single family residents here, Tom, and his wife Erica. Um, I think their driveway is roughly right, right, right up to the lot line here. Um, so they're. They're pretty close to mm -hmm. the lot line. Um, the abutter on the other side is a two-family, um, but it's it's condo, so their driveway is is going to be right in here. Um, I've basically been in communication with both of them for at least two years now, um, which is kind of how long I've been working on it. Um, so they they know about it. They're they're comfortable. 
So the driveway to the north on Elliott Street would be, it looks like maybe 10 feet away from their curb cut, maybe 20. 10, 15 feet, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Any other questions from the board? No problem. Any other public comment? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Move the board of select and close the hearing on 90, did you have your? No. Okay. 90 to 92 Green Street. Do I have a second? Second. Andy seconds. Any further discussion? All those in favor of closing the hearing? 5 0. Move the Board of Selectmen approve the driveway application for 90 to 92 Green Street as proposed. Do I have a second? Second. Barry seconds. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor? 5 0. <coughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good, luck. Thank Good you. luck. Good luck with the project. Yeah. Good luck. Thanks. Mr. Chair, I. I um, was remiss. I, I wanted to ask Bob a question during the uh, his report. Things moved a little too sure. fast for me, and I forgot. It's a small thing, but um, I've been getting emails and calls, and I know you have from a resident on Oak Street about the the ongoing uh, the repaving of the road and uh, soil quality and things like that. And uh, he he is hoping to have a meeting with you at some point. Is that, how is that coming along and maybe um, with some of the other residents? I got an email tonight and I haven't opened it yet, but I know it's from another uh, one or two people on Oak Street. I think it's a couple. Okay. And the question they asked um, was, <clears throat> when is the replanting going to happen? Yeah. So right now there's a lot of gaps between the road and their lawn. Yeah. Um, and I don't know the date, but it was really weather dependent. It was September. It was mm -hmm. described in July to us as sometime in September. Now, it turned out this week, given the weather, it probably would have been fine. Yeah. Uh, but they wanted to wait until the chance of uh, you know, a heat wave is, is diminished. So that, that I can say, okay. should be in September. The other issue is if you drive down Oak Street and you see some chalk outlines, there's a couple, there's at least two of them. <laughs> they're, not, they're not of people. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're of parts where there's puddling, and there shouldn't be puddling right, on right. new pavement. I don't know what the current plan is on repaving other than the contractor is owed to the town to fix it. Right. So right. those are the two things I know. Yeah. I, Once those are fixed, um, I've been in touch with a number of neighbors. Yeah. You know, we'll have a meeting as, as is necessary. But I think those are the two issues that people have. Okay. I, I would just encourage you, if as time permits, to, to, to try to meet with some of these folks. They, they, they want the communication uh, piece in there because you know, it was a big project on the street. Yep. And I just want you to know that uh, earlier in the yeah, year, were, I, did, yeah. I did meet with a group who were more focused on the sidewalk issues, and I have not heard back from it. I did drive the street. Right. To me, to the untrained eye, it looked like the sidewalks on the uh, south side have been done very nicely. Right. Uh, and that was the main focus. And they do need to plant the tree lawns, and there are some gaps there right now, but they're going to be doing that. Yeah. So I haven't heard back from that. And I think this was one specific resident might have even had a different issue. <coughs> yeah, I think it's sort of two ends yeah. of the streets yeah. from what I gather. Yeah, and yeah. You, they may you, not have even talked to each right. other. Right, and uh, I guess there was a meeting in one of the garages where a town official was there and they were hoping that they'd have more meetings and mm -hmm. it, it hasn't happened. So if yeah. we facilitate some, you know, sometimes better communication uh, helps uh, smooth waters. Although in this case, it seems like it's mostly factual well, when and how. Mm -hmm. what we yeah, true, but um, you know, sometimes a little FaceTime okay. is helpful. All right. Um, let's see, moving on. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Um, next, we have a Board of Health update, which uh, Town Council will take the lead on. As if I'm here, I can introduce the members since I'm their liaison. Uh, John Costigan, Chair. Uh, Beth Sherlin is a member. Nancy Doctor is associate member uh, from right to left. I think that's pretty clear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes, I'm sorry. I think can we're waving hello. Ask a question. Yes, sure. Uh, Nancy Doctor. My first question is why did the Board of Selectmen and the town manager intentionally endanger? The financial welfare of several Reading downtown businesses by not following. Nancy, the I'm sorry. This is out of order. This is a, this is a hearing for the Board of Health. I yes. thought you had a procedural question. If you have a question, you can raise it at an appropriate time during the discussion. But it's not appropriate to raise it now. 
This is a board of select meeting inquiring the board of health. Right? I think that's fair. So, um, so the select one have asked me to uh, uh, to moderate this, if you will. Um, and so the hope here is that the we can um, identify and make take appropriate steps to make the town government run more efficiently. Um, and the selectmen decided that it would be beneficial to get together and review some of what's been going on at the Board of Health uh, and some of the procedures and activities uh, from the last few months. So let's. Can I, I'm sorry, can I interrupt? When you said the Board of Selectmen, I, I don't, maybe I, my memory doesn't serve very well, but uh, I, I don't remember the board having a discussion about various topics and issues with the board. I know Dan's reported on it. Yes. But um, I didn't, uh, I heard they were invited by a letter from the Board of Selectmen, and That's right. I'm a Board of Selectmen, and I didn't see the letter or know anything about it. You so haven't seen the letter? No. Oh, I have not look at it. So, so, I mean, I think that's a, a, sort of a little separate issue that when something is sent out on behalf of the board, that the entire board gets a chance to take a look at the letter before it goes out. I want the other side. I misspoke. The town manager signed it. Sorry. Right. Oh, here All it right. is. There it is. Yeah. yeah. It says, in the excited exercise of its appointing authority, the board of selectmen hereby calls all full and associate members of the Board of Health to its open session meeting on blah, 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 discuss the following matters, and then it lists seven matters. And then failure to attend the selectmen's August 29th meeting <coughs> without good cause may be grounds for remo removal pursuant to Article 8.12 of the town's charter. Um, I, I just think uh, that if something goes out uh, on behalf of the Board of Selectmen, uh, all the selectmen should see it. Uh, before it goes out. In um, the, in this the, sounds the, like a management in, question in the, the, as opposed to a legal question. It's not, yes, uh, I, I, but you're running the show, so I'm, I'm, I'm asking you. I, I just, uh, in the future, if we could, if we could, everybody could see the letter before, before it goes out. Uh, I thought it was, it seems, this sounds a little, little have failure to attend, uh, could, could maybe grounds for removals, it seems a little, <coughs> Heavy, heavy-handed. Since, especially since the last meeting, uh, they they expressed expressed a desire to see us. So I, I think, you know, a simple email saying can we get together on this date would have been fine. But in, in any event, in, in the future, when letters go out, if on behalf of the board of selectmen, if we could all take a look at it, I, I'd appreciate it. Thanks. Is it, uh, Mr. Chairman? John. Isn't that part of the reason that we elect the chair? To act on our behalf. Yes, sir. I understand. I, I think the technical issue is it's, it's as if it comes from the entire board. Where, where I, I could, I was, I'm looking through the town charter. Right, and I'm, the sorry, bylaws I'm, so, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry to cut it. this off. I, your That's points, fine. Your points yeah. made. Thanks. I just want to move on. Good. Okay, so let's start by making clear what everybody's status is. So, um, John, you're the chair. I am the chair. Okay, and when were you appointed? Do you know? Appointed to the board or appointed as chair? Well, let's start with appointed to the board. Uh, I was appointed to the board about one year ago, July of 2016. Okay, and what, is that for a full term or, or was that, that was to complete? It was a three-year three year term. Okay, so uh, so you've got two more years to go. Correct. All right. And when were you elected the chair? I believe it was February of 2017. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, were you elected um, um, to fill out a, a term? Or were you elected uh, yes. for? Uh, for uh, yes, I was uh, to fill out uh, Andy's term uh, as the chair. As the chair. So when when will you be up for, or when will the position of chair be up for election again? Do you know? Uh, uh, well, I, I don't know if that's a whenever. Uh, whenever I guess we would decide to have an, uh, an election for that. Okay. So when you okay, all right. Um, uh, okay, and Beth, you're listed on the website as being a member. Yes. Um, uh, is, is it correct to, that there is no vice chair or correct. clerk or uh, other office? Yes. It's just chair. Okay. Chair and two members. Okay. Uh, and when were you appointed? 
Well, it was two years ago. Okay. June. So you'll be up um, for reappointment should you so desire this coming June. Yes. All right. Okay. And Nancy, you're an associate member. Is that correct? I'm now an associate member. I have been a full member. Okay. And, and when were you appointed as an associate member? Um, associate member, I believe, John was. Um, when I became the full yes. member. Yes. So yeah. July of 2016. Yes. July of 2016. So. Associate members serve for two-year terms, so that means you're up um, mm, next, in, year. next year. Okay, all right. Um, do does the board have any regulations or policies that outline the duties and the responsibilities of the chair? Not in our regulations, no. Not, not, not that I'm aware of. Okay, I'm not aware of any either. So, but I figured I better ask. So. In the absence of a regulation or policy, what do you understand to be the chair's role? Uh, well, to run the meetings, to uh, try and uh, express the goals of the board, the objectives of the board, and uh, try to lead the board in, in that direction for the public health of the, of the community. Okay, all right, that's good. Beth, does that sound about right to you? Yes. Okay, Nancy? Yes. All right, okay. So um, recently I understand that John represented the board on a screening committee for the health agent. That is, is that correct. correct? Okay, and how did that work out? Very well. We pretty much unanimously decided on a candidate. I, at least I thought. We didn't actually vote on it, but we all pretty much were in agreement of the candidate. Okay, all right. Can I interject? Yes, please do. I did express the desire to be involved in that process but it did not happen because we were, for the last health agent, many members were involved in the screening process. But we okay, can you, can you describe how that worked? We were involved in interviews with the candidates, the preliminary interviews, um, but this time it was just John. Okay. I need to ask a question. Yeah. Okay. Um, Andy, you would have been chair during that. Mm -hmm. Do you remember any of that? Yeah, there was a lot of tag teaming going on. For, uh, I, I couldn't make all of the interviews. Other members. So there's one member at a time. There yes. Were more than, I think there was yes. more than one. I don't know. I, I don't I recall whether there were one or two, but um, we always tried to have somebody, at least one member. Mm -hmm. Either I remember doing it by phone once, and uh, and and going to other members so went there. So yeah. if there's two member, so basically if there's two people there, you basically have a quorum so and you have probably. to. And you have if to you're just, not yeah. if you're just listening. And an interview. It's, it's got to be a deliberative thing. Two people can be in a room without deliberating. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. I, That's I don't think, I, I think that, that, feel, that feels, this feels a little bit like water under the dam as to whether, well, yeah, whether I somebody, forget, to be honest, some, whether, whether there was one two or two people or, there I know there was a lot of, uh, nobody could, no one person could cover the, all right, the interviews. Okay. So. That, that makes sense. Yeah. That yeah. makes sense. Uh, yes, okay. Mr. Chairman. I was president at every one of those interviews. Okay. As the liaison from the selectee. Okay. And there was never more than one okay. ever right. at any of those meetings. Okay. Now, um, there may have been a different face, but I mean, you know, we're there the way I saw my role as liaison mm -hmm. and the way I understood the role as a member of the Board of Health um, showing up at the interviews was to hear and offer input. Um, when asked. I mean, this is a human resources issue and a management issue. Mm -hmm. And so throughout that last hire, um, there was, I was consistently at every one of those. Okay. Um, and there was sporadic attendance from the Board of Health. Um, but, you know, we ended up with a person to be hired okay. by the time it was all over. And as John points out, it's not, everybody doesn't get a vote. Mm -hmm. It's a management decision um, that you know we offer input to when asked, um, which is kind of what the way the process worked the last time. Okay, so so a screening committee can work in a couple of different ways, and maybe you can describe how this the screening committee worked this time. Um, namely, um, uh, um, is the model that um, that John just described that the Board of Health person 
was there simply to observe right, it. But this this was not a screening process. I think we were down to the final candidates. Okay. So, so you didn't participate in the initial screening. This was correct. in no, in no. in the evaluation of the correct. final candidates. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, All right. Just just and to be clear, John and I both joined at the same time in that last uh, leg, if you will. Okay. Process. All right. And um, or the members of the committee um, could be more active in in you know in conducting the interview, asking the questions, and interacting with the, with, with the, um, the candidates. You did, so, yes, we, we did, yes. I so did. it was more like that? Yes, I did okay. have a few questions that I did pose to the candidates. Okay, uh, all right, okay. And there was, but there was, ultimately the, the committee didn't vote, is that right? There was no vote, no. I did not have a vote There's on no the hiring. Meeting. I have no. Okay, hmm. all right, okay. Um, um, okay. Now, I understand that there, there was some concern about um, the confidentiality of the committee's processes and deliberations. Are you aware of any issues of that sort? I did hear of it, yes. And I, I did have, uh, I was given by HR the resumes of the candidates. Okay. Uh, I did have of the those, Of the finalists. Of the finalists. Okay. I did have those on my person at a uh, Board of Health meeting. Uh, I did, we did discuss the qualifications of the different nominees, the applicants, uh, and that's pretty much about as far as it went. Okay. <coughs> All right. Um, In my recollection, that's all we spoke about pretty much with the qualifications, who was a sanitarian, who was not. Got it. Okay. So, do you think there was a concern about about leaks, if you will? At the time, I had no no knowledge of that. Okay. All right. Beth or Nancy, do you do you remember having any issues about leaks? No. So I'm a little puzzled. Even, yes. I, guess, I don't need to be honest. honest. I'm not okay. quite sure <laughs> what, what what the concern is. All right. Okay. Um, okay. So. Um, since we since um, um, there's been a vacancy on the on the board, um, I understand at least on a couple of occasions you have designated Nancy to serve as uh, a voting member. Voting member, that's right. correct. So uh, the bylaw says that you may designate one or more associate members to deliberate and vote on any matter before the before the board. So. Um, um, I looked through all the minutes. I found that at least twice when you did it, once on, on April nineteenth and once on June twenty first. Okay, um, and um, both times, what the minutes say is that she was designated as a voting member. So, um, the um, do you, do you, can you help me to understand why she was you did that twice? Uh, I may not have been sure if we had to do it each time. Okay. I remember it got Dan actually. Yes, Dan to us. I yes. reminded them that they yes. needed to Dan elevate her formally. I don't know if you ran any meetings where she was already voting. We did one retroactively and one currently is what I thought. Okay. You had you, you mm. did a little housekeeping with us right. is what I believe. Right. Okay. Yes. Is to make sure that we had. Okay, so so when you did that, was it your intention that that there was a time limit that it was for the for that one meeting or? To, uh, to be honest, I was not sure, but I thought we, I were on the side of making sure that she was a voting member. Okay, all right. But um, so was it your idea that you'd make her a voting member, basically, um, for an indefinite amount of time? Uh, yes. So we would have three three members. Okay. All right. Um, so I think what you may be referring to, um, uh, Dan, is that um, they, uh, at the June 21st meeting, looks like um, Nancy was designated about halfway through the meeting. And, um, and that may be what, it doesn't say in the minutes, but I'm, I'm guessing somebody said, does she need to be designated again? And so you may have to do that. That may have been brought up. Okay. All right. Um, 
Okay, so as we sit here today, are, is it your understanding that Nancy is, is supposed to be allowed to act as a full member as if she had been appointed at, by the Board of Selectmen? Well, I would assume if I have not revoked that, that she is a voting member. Got it. All right. So you'd expect her to deliberate and vote on all matters, and you wouldn't feel the need to designate her again? As of right now, I would. Okay. And would you expect her to exercise power outside of the Board of Health meeting? Outside of? The actual meeting. Power as of? As a Board of Health member. Well, as a, as a Board of Health member. Yes. Uh, in coordination with the board, I would expect so. Okay, all right. So, as we said here today, we have um, two full-time full members. We have an associate member who has been designated to um, function more or less the same as a full member um, with an indefinite duration, presumably until such time as an actual full member is appointed. Is that all fair? That's where we are. Okay, all right. So in that letter that you looked at, there are a number of items listed. And, yes, I um, see it. Uh, the selectman uh, asked me to go through them, so I will, one by one, as, in, in the order that they have. So first up is the meeting of July 19th. So um, I, I looked at the video of that meeting, and I also looked at the minutes. The video suggests that uh, there was a motion to go into executive session for the purpose of giving notice. The, um, the minutes suggest that there was a motion to go into executive session for the purpose of scheduling a future meeting. Um, can someone explain what that's about? Well, We've been trying to do everything by the books. So the intent was not to meet an executive session to discuss anything other than schedule, to give notice. And that's okay. actually so the intent. I, but, uh, I'm, could, have been, I'm, could have been overkill. Scheduling and give notice. So your to discussion of your schedule would normally be something that you do Session. Yes, and it could have been overkill because it really was discussing vacation coverage, vacation schedules. Mm -hmm. When we could meet, when, when we, we couldn't could. meet. Okay. Okay. Before you went into executive session, Nancy, you indicated that you spoke to the staff council at uh, the Mass Association of Health Boards. Cheryl Sabar, who mm -hmm. gave what you would call legal education. Okay, and that you, it, in the video, it, it says that you spoke to somebody from the district attorney's office. And I corrected and that. It's in the, the AG's office. Th and that's what it says in the in Yes. The, okay, so yes. that is the person. Do you know who you spoke to? No. I a actually asked for information about executive sessions. Okay. And they actually forwarded me all that information. Okay, so when did these conversations happen? Like uh, the day of the meeting? Or no. Before um, it? Or? Right before the meeting, actually, in terms of the email I received from Cheryl. Okay, so mm -hmm. the same day as the meeting? Could have been the day, probably the day before. Yeah, yeah, the this day with before. You. Okay. Okay. And when you were getting that information, what did you share? What what question did you pose? Is I guess the question. To. Well, either one. Let's start. With, let's start with the staff council from the Mass Association of Health Boards. What um, did you ask her? I actually don't believe I can talk about. Unless you would care to go into executive session. Um, okay, this is a conversation that you no, had. It's an email, a hypothetical email. What should I do? We were told that we could not meet in executive session by the Board of Selectmen. We were told that we could not temporarily appoint a health agent by the Board of Selectmen and the town manager and that we had concerns that we presented in an email to the Board of Health by the public health nurse. What should we do? I, 
I'm having a hard time understanding this because you shared information which you're not, you say is not public information, but you shared it with somebody outside of the I town. I shared government. that information. What do we do about concerns that were sent in an email? Okay. That the Board of Health has shared with the Board of Selectmen and with the town manager. And we wanted to be able to discuss this, and we've been told we can't. Ray, I have that email. Is that the one that went from uh, mm -hmm. to yes. you and then Costigan forwarded it to me? Yes. So two, a quorum of that committee has now touched that email. I believe it's a public record. And I have a copy yeah. of it here if you want it. So you sent an email. I did not send it. I used this is the one from Donna, correct? Yes. Correct. Yeah, yes. yeah I have that. And it went to you and then, no, to Beth, then to you and then to me. So a quorum has seen that email. I believe that makes it a public record, yes. It came from? The Donna Pierce, the health nurse. Okay. I think following her departure from the town. Okay, so somebody who is not a town official at the time. Correct. Sent, a, sent an email. To Elizabeth. And I don't know if it was blind yeah. copied elsewhere. It's okay. possible it was. And I don't okay. know the date. I don't know if she was still okay. So that is a so so that is a communication from someone outside of town government to someone inside town government. That is a public record, absolutely. Because yes. okay. I don't know the date if she sent it when she was still an employee. Is I don't it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We get emails all the time from constituents. Okay. So Okay, but if she was an employee at the time that she sent it, no, that would be different. That's what I'm saying. I don't know. I don't have Barry, can you give it the to dates. Me? Mm -hmm. look at this it. is it? That's it. And the date is June 18th. Right. The PIN, okay. the pin 13 email is cost again. Second paragraph. Get your resignation date. This is confirming my resignation as of June 15th, so she had already resigned. Okay. So this is a public record. So this is what you shared? information in that, yes. Okay. All right. And, um, okay, and and the person at the Mass Association of Health Boards told you that you could indeed go into an executive session to discuss this? Yes. Okay. And, and suggested we, it would be, should be referred to town council. Well, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which we also shared with Board of I never saw that letter. Uh, okay. What did you share with the board of selectmen? Uh, it should be in our meeting minutes what Cheryl Savaro suggested. Okay. Well, let's see if it is. Um, I don't have Savaro's email. Okay, so this would be your minutes of of, Ju of June 21st? It's July 19th. June 19th. July 19th. July 19th? Well, that's what we're talking about. Oh, okay. Well, this, I believe, um, we're going to talk about it in June. Okay. So you think it's June? Could be June. Okay. We've been struggling with this for three months, so it could be June. Okay. I'm going to work with you to help me in Okay. June 27th is the email. So when is our June meeting? All right. 21st. So this would have to be at the July. So it must okay, be so July. Okay, my, so my, my dad. All right, so, so on the July 19th. July 19th, yeah. okay. Okay. All right. So you indicate. So you're saying that there's some information that you shared, but you're not prepared to discuss it in in an open session. That's correct. Because we have actually talked about it with the health agent and her attorney in an executive session, and the board of selectmen were present. I was so present. They, yeah. 
So they do know what the concerns were. One selectman. One, one selectman. Select right. mm -hmm. One selectman. So the health agent and her attorney have been informed as to what these concerns are. Okay. All right. So you received advice from two different people, though. You're from the Mass Association of Health Boards attorney and mm -hmm. from somebody in the Attorney General's office. Mm -hmm. Guided me on executive sessions. Okay. And what specifically did they advise you? Do you know? Uh, they forwarded me basically this much information about, I guess, this thick or this long? Know about executive sessions, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. This thick? That thick. Not okay. Not that little, that thick. Not, okay, got yes. it. All right. And somebody told you that it was all right to go into executive session for the purpose that, that you did? Yes. Okay. Well, all right. Um, so, next up is the meeting of August 8th. Okay, so according to the agenda of the meeting, that meeting was called by you, Nancy. Yes, it was. Okay, that's correct? Yes. So was it actually jointly called by by Nancy and Beth? Yes. That was the one. Which one was that? The one that um, John was on vacation. Okay. Yes. 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 Okay. We agreed to have a meeting. Okay. So on the agenda, it says mm -hmm. it was it was called by you, but it yes. was really both of you together. Yes. yes. Okay. Um, and who attended? Beth, myself. Yeah. I was there. Yes. All right. But not for the. Um, I did not stay for the executive session. Got it. Session. Right. Okay. <coughs> and you said that John didn't attend. John was right. not. I was on meeting. vacation. I was not he there. He was absent. Okay. So can you explain why you considered it important to meet at a time when John was not available? Uh, actually, I can explain well, that. Mm -hmm. We had agreed to go into executive session and then. John sent an email that night. I'm just going to say the whole thing. He sent a, a, an email through town management telling us he did not want to have the, he's not comfortable with the executive session, and he felt we should appoint the health agent. And there were a few other opinions in there. So we, we knew that he wasn't comfortable with that. So we, I think, felt comfortable having a meeting when he wasn't there because he did not want to be president at that executive session. But we couldn't respond because we couldn't deliberate by email. Right. Okay. I, I was, I you want to you, you want to elaborate on that at well, all? Yeah, I was just not comfortable going into the executive session. I wasn't after reviewing what had happened. I didn't think it warranted uh, going into an executive session for a character issue. I just did, I wasn't comfortable with that. Okay. So, and then I went on vacation. Smart. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I had so, a plan. So the, <laughs> the actual the actual motion indicates that mm -hmm. you went into executive session for the purpose of number five. Number five to yes. investigate charges of criminal misconduct yes. or to consider the filing of criminal complaints. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's something. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. What can you tell us about that? Anything? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Unless you'd like to meet in executive session. I had um, information from the day before, which is why I called that. All right. Well, let's let's ponder that a bit. So have you been in touch with the police? Um, we have voted on our minutes mm -hmm. from that executive session. I don't know how else to respond to this. Well, because we I mean, you've either communicated to the police or you haven't. No, we have not. Not about that. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, okay, that's fair. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, any, any, have you communicated with anybody? Any town official? No. Okay. All right. So. 
Um, I looked at the video of that one too. It says, um, um, right after, right after that, that executive session was actually quite short. Yes. And then right after, um, you voted to file a public records request. Yes. For all electronic communications between the town manager, Robert Lubsher, the yes. assistant town manager, Jean Dalios. Yes. And Laura Vlasic and Bob Gracie between June 1st and August 8th, yes. 2017. That was actually my third request for that. Okay. I requested that from the chair two other times. From the chair of? The Board of Health. Okay. I'm, I'm missing something. Yes. You made that request to the chair? Yes. Two other times. Okay. And you didn't get it? Is that the? I didn't get it. Okay. Is that? Uh, I, I was not comfortable in ascertaining that information. Okay. 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 Um, all right, I'm missing something. Why would you ask the chair for that information? I can ask the chair for information. Yes, but he doesn't, I mean, he She asked him to get it for, for us. Oh. Yes. Oh, oh, yeah, oh. Yeah, oh. To okay. it. You yeah. asked him to make that request. Yes, yeah. right. Okay, you are not asking him <laughs> to, for the, for the no. communications. He didn't have them. No, right. I can, okay. I can ask right. the chair to do that. Yes, you can ask the chair yes. to make that request. Right. But what I understood you to be saying was that you asked the chair to give I'm you sorry. that information. Mm -hmm. I'm and thinking, and I, I don't I, understand why, why, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I get that part. Okay. okay, so you named four people in that in that request. Mm -hmm. So is it fair to conclude then that those are the four people that are under investigation for the potential criminal misconduct? This is like what's my mind or something. Um. So you went into executive <laughs> session for a very short time. Yes. And you came out and you immediately yes. posed this public records request. But you're assuming that they're related. Yeah, that's why I'm asking you. No, are they related? We can't answer that question because well, that would reveal what we talked about in executive session. And we um, can't do that. I'm not sure that that's true. Okay. Go I mean, do, do you? Well, I wasn't in the executive session, so I was. But you've read our yeah. meeting minutes now. We had thrown the book at him. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little, I understand what you're asking, but I'm, I'm a, I, I, I have to be really careful about how I answer that because of executive session minutes. Okay, but here we have four people yes. who've been named in a, in a public records request yes. that was made right after you went into, into executive session to discuss criminal activity. Yes. I need to advise these people whether, whether so, they um, should be it, accusing is it, themselves from this. Is it safer to this. say um, that it was coincid coincidental, mm. timing? Okay, so it's unrelated. So no one should draw the inference that any, that any of those four people were the subject of It may criminal. or may not be related, but not well. necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, I don't, I, 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 I understand what you're getting at, right. and I don't think that that should be the concern. Right. I don't think that should be the concern right. of the town manager. Okay. Or the other three people? Okay. When do you expect your investigation to be complete? Oh boy, these are hard questions. Well, <laughs> we have repeatedly asked for an investigation. In fact, the Board of Health has stated what our concerns are repeatedly about the appointment to the, of this health agent for the past three months. We've made a formal request for an investigation into the health the public health nurses. Ray, together. I have something. Okay, um, I, I don't know about this formal request for investigation. I don't, I'm not going to comment on that, but at the executive session on August 15th, where I was invited prior to going in, uh, Ms. Vlasic's attorney did ask 
are we going to this executive session under reason one or reason five? Nancy said at that point, it is not reason five. It has nothing to do with the prior executive session. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. Is that what you just said, or is that not what you just said? That is exactly what So I Laura said. was not the subject of this 8-8 session? The executive session was for number one. Yes. Not the That's one on 8-8. Eight 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 the one on the, the eighth. One, I'm the, talking one on about. the one on the eighth. That you you stated on the fifteenth that that That's one. That's right. The board of health has limited abilities, and there are certain things that are not under our purview. Mm -hmm. That is certainly true. Yes. Yes. Can we just leave it at that? We're, we, otherwise, we're going to be talking about what we talked about in executive session. I don't think we can talk about it at all. I mean, if we go into executive session, we can all clear this all up, but this is just going to become a guessing game at this point. Okay, well, so the problem with going into executive session is if we are going to um, go into executive session under reason one, we need to have given 48 hours notice to someone. Right. Mm -hmm. Which we clearly have not. Wait, remind me on reason what post. reason one is. We can do. That's to discuss. Yeah, we can do number five though, yeah. can't we? Perhaps. Well, you know, I have been at at this work for forty years. I have never seen an executive session under reason five ever under any mm -hmm. circumstances. So, um, the uh, um, so re reason five is is um, is. Uh, to investigate charges of criminal misconduct or to consider the filing of criminal complaints. Right, just for the okay. benefit of everybody, could you also read number one, what that's for? Uh, some uh, of the board members are not totally familiar with that. Okay, so um, uh, reason one is longer, yes. Reason one is to discuss the reputation, character, physical condition, or mental health rather than the professional competence of an individual or to discuss the discipline or dismissal of or complaints or charges brought against a public officer, employee, staff member, or individual. Okay, so one is to conduct a, you know, to 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 uh, uh, to do some kind of investigation with respect to criminal misconduct. No, that's five, that's and that's five. five. Well, I, yeah, I didn't mean number one. I just meant. I mean, one of them. Uh, one of them is is no. a criminal, and the other one is is is. Uh, Potential discipline, right. and with respect to reason number one, yeah. you have to give forty-eight hours notice to whoever right. it is that you're going to be discussing. With respect to number five, there's no similar. And isn't it true also that the person under investigation of the reason one can elect to have that questioning done in open session? That is correct. Mm -hmm. That was not done apparently. Well, well, I don't know, but it was offered out. in the it letter. Was, yeah, it was offered, yeah. but she did not. Okay. So you're continuing your investigation. You don't know when it's going to be complete. You haven't talked we with the police. We did not police. say that. We did not say we were continuing the investigation. Okay, but I, when I asked you when you expected to to be complete, you said you didn't know. Okay. The Board of Health does not have purview over all areas. Yes. <coughs> we can't investigate in the area that we have no purview. We, we can't investigate. Well, no, we, we can't investigate something we have no purview over, is what we're saying. And okay. I don't think we can talk about our executive session this way. Okay, because you believe that whatever it is that you discuss needs to continue to remain confidential. Yes. Okay. All right. So, all right, well, let's move <coughs> on to the meeting of August 15th. Um, so that meeting says, the agenda says it was called, called, called by you, Beth. That okay. was, which one was that? August 15th. Yes. You opened it. Oh, no, the, the, the agenda says okay, right. called yes, by. Yeah. Yes, 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 okay. I did call and it. Again, I'm going to assume that it was really the two of you that well, called we were it the together. only two that, no, you called it, and I, I was the only attendee because John was. No, okay, all right, no, but we're also really talking about who called the meeting. So, what do you mean you by under, called the meeting? Well, under our charter, meetings can be called 
by the chair, yes. or they can be called by a majority of the members. Mm -hmm. okay. What does called mean? It means uh, uh, published. Called to order. order. Okay, okay. No, no, no. It does not oh. mean called to order. Posting. It means it means authorizing uh, the posting of a meeting. Okay, let's have posting. a meeting. Let's have a meeting. Okay, got it. Okay. Got it. Yes. So. That's the reason why I wanted to make yes. to make it clear that each of you mm -hmm. individually can't do it, but together right. you can. Okay. Okay. Yes. So when it says called by Beth, even though it says that, what really happened it was called by Beth and Nancy. We agreed to have a meeting, and I think I notified. Okay. <coughs> All right. I think Beth was still the chair pro tem at that point, if I remember correctly. You were elected yes. pro tem on the eighth, mm -hmm. which is yeah. maybe why you posted the fifteenth. Okay. Was all this well? So, so a chair pro tem is only the the duration of office is only until they adjourn. Oh, then. So, okay. so um, all right. I, I was back from vacation, but I was at work that of that evening. Okay. Uh, so that was going to be my next question. You weren't I, there, I right? I was at work. I did get an email. Mm -hmm. I noticed the email when I got back from vacation that a meeting had been called. Okay. And I could not attend because of work. Okay, so when you called it, did you, like, again, it, you considered it would be important to call the meeting even though you didn't, you, it was possible that John was not going to be able to attend? Yes. Okay. And even though they were meeting the following evening? Mm -hmm. A regularly scheduled meeting was the yes. next evening. Okay, all right. Okay, so I read out before, but I'll do it again. The reason number one, which is the one we used for that one, is to discuss the reputation, character, physical condition, or mental health rather than professional competence of an individual, or to discuss the discipline or dismissal of or complaints or charges brought against a public officer, employee, staff member, or individual. So the reason I said or is because there's really two parts to this. You could do it for to discuss reputation, character, physical condition, mental health, or to discuss discipline or dismissal or complaints or charges brought against an individual. Ray, Ray may so, I ask you a question? Yes. When you're calling these executive sessions, yes. do you have some implied reporting relationship in a line management sense to the person whom you're discussing? Uh, if we were to call such a session, it would generally be for a town employee under Bob, mm -hmm. but they don't have employees. Right. So what is their, do they have standing to even discuss this in an executive Well, session? that depends on whether they're in Part A or Part B. That's the reason why I'm, why I'm trying to focus here is whether they were trying to. No. So typically when you, when you make a motion to go into executive session, it's a little more specific than this rather than reciting the whole thing. Were you, were you focusing on discussing the reputation, character, physical condition, or mental health, or were you focusing on discussing discipline or dismissal, or were you discussing on, uh, focusing on complaints or charges brought against the individual? So if you're asking us to discuss the character or reputation of the health agent, we'd have to go into executive session. That's right. All of those are valid bases for going into executive session. What I'm trying to find out is, were you doing all three, or were you, were you and doing... And how do I answer that without disclosing <coughs> the executive minute meetings? Well, typically, a motion to go into executive session mm -hmm. would say we're going to discuss the number one reputation. Character and reputation. <coughs> yes. Okay, so that's that's what you were focusing on. Yes. Okay. All right. And Laura was um, invited to that executive session, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Along with her attorney. With her attorney. All right. And and I was um, invited also. Okay. Um, and the letter that you sent said that you were going to discuss matters relating to you. Yes. Okay. So relating to you. Relating to Laura. To, oh, to Laura. Okay. Yeah. So it's addressed to Laura. It says we're going to yeah, go into executive session to discuss matters relating to you. Are you comfortable that Laura knew what she was, um, what was going to be discussed? Am I comfortable? Well, are any of you comfortable? It's a little. You know, it doesn't specify it here. We did write out in the letter what what it was. I, she cited the number, but we didn't go into any more detail than that. Okay. And her attorney, that we read her all of the rights of what the executive session was. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, do you have a copy of the letter that you sent? I don't know if I have it with me. I do have okay. a copy, but All I right. don't know if I have it with me. Okay. So if you do, let, okay. you know, let, let's take a look at it. Okay. I, I will look for it. Okay. So what I'm trying to get at is um, whether you, if you, if you say somebody, to somebody, we're going into executive session to discuss matters relating to you. The person was, may, may know was, exactly what you're talking about. No, I think it was actually written out what the statute is. Oh, yeah, yeah. We yeah, should, yeah, we yeah, yeah. I understand law, that. I understand everything that. I understand that. Yes. The person may know yes. exactly what you're talking right. about. Right. Because they know what, or they may look at that and say, I have no idea what, what you're talking about. Because it, it doesn't specify, you know, on thus and such a day you did this or, right. you know, whatever. So when you, when you are, what I'm trying to find out is which group are we in? Are we in mm -hmm. a communication where Laura absolutely knew what, what you were um, uh, I think that's concerned a about? for Laura. Well, no, I'm asking whether you were confident because you wrote the letter. I don't, I don't have to have a little on Okay. Side. All right. Okay. We've had very little contact with Lara, so I don't, I don't, okay. I don't know how we would know if she knew why we were concerned. Okay. All we right. We had one, one meeting with her, and she didn't give us much information. Open okay. And you said, you, you, you said that you informed Laura, that she could require the meeting to be held in open session, right? You know what? I don't have the letter in front okay. of me, so I, I don't want to mis misspeak. Okay, but before you said you said she didn't want to have it in open session. I don't okay. believe she did, but I. Okay. It was an executive session. Okay. All right. All right. Let's move on. Uh, the minutes of the Board of Health meetings uh, is item four on the let, on the selections list. Um, um, can you uh, say how close how how close you are to getting all of your minutes approved? Actually, all of our minutes are approved. All all, all of your minutes have been approved. Have what? How long? For we're pretty close. Six well, months for approval of minutes. I no, think we're, no, I think we're pretty, pretty up to date. You're pretty up to date. Okay. We just so approved our executive. This, uh, this happens to be something yes. that the attorney general's office is really cracking down. Their we, recommendation we just is that they want approved our executive meeting minutes okay. prior to this meeting tonight. Okay. So the um, uh, the attorney general thinks that it's important mm -hmm. um, for you to approve minutes mm -hmm. for the immediately preceding me meeting, if it's at all possible. And certainly, you, they don't want you going six months. They, they'll, mm -hmm. they'll, they'll, they'll tolerate maybe. Mm -hmm. no, um, we, 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 yes, we did uh, approve our July minutes in our mm -hmm. August meeting. OK, okay. And so you good. We, we did approve tonight's three meetings. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, okay. yes. OK, so you've approved the minutes of the three executive sessions that we've been talking about. Yes. Okay. And have um, you discussed whether approved minutes should be released? No. Okay. We were interrupted actually to come and attend this board meeting, so we actually didn't get to that. But okay. All right. So um, you understand that you have whenever as soon as you determine that there's not a continuing need for, you have to release the the executive session minutes. Okay. So do you do that regularly? I'm sorry, do we review, meet regularly? Do you review discuss? executive session minutes regularly to make sure that 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 uh, well, you're disclosed to anything that's not necessary? Well, I think we've decided that our August 8th, or no, the one before that, the July one, there was no confidential information in, so we we would be able to disclose that. So you'll be, re so you'll be releasing but, those? But okay. the two that I would not add, uh, that I just saw tonight, that I, we would not disclose yet. We would not release yet. Okay. All right. 
So item five on, on the list was the Board of Health Management policy. Um, and I believe, if I understand this correctly, is that there's been some concern from certain staff members who are assigned to support the Board of Health uh, that they're having limited or, or no access to the board's decision making. And, uh, and the mirror image I think you expressed earlier is um, that you haven't had a lot of contact with the, with the staff people. So it sounds like on both sides, staff is concerned they're not getting enough uh, contact with the board and the board is, it sounds like they're concerned they're not getting enough contact with the staff. Well, the is concern that fair? is actually, um, the, the concern is that the town manager told staff uh, through um, an email not to attend our July um, Board of Health meeting. I'm sure I never said yeah. that. Um, it's uh, in an email. I think um, you stated you would not be attending. Yeah, I might have said I was not there. That, that staff would not tell. be, that staff would not be attending the Board of Health um, July meeting. So okay. staff, and we had no staff that attended. Okay. So you okay. wanted staff to be present, and you we believe that- We haven't gotten health reports since May. I actually had to file a public uh, uh, record request to get health inspections. Okay. So uh, I'm missing what happened here. So mm -hmm. you wanted the staff to show up at a meeting to make it their monthly report. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And it didn't happen because? I don't know. Uh, you know. There was one meeting that the health agent had a funeral. Okay. Uh, the second time that he was not there, I'm not quite sure why he wasn't there. Okay, so now when you're talking about the health agent in this context, you're this talking about Bob Grace. Bob Grace. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And then he was on vacation in our last meeting. Okay. The reports can be given to us by anyone in the department. Okay. So, uh, any questions from Chair? Mr. Chair, oh, I'm sorry, Jane. Just a point of clarification. As the department head, um, we did uh, get a, a, a request from the chair to have a um, complete report for, I believe it was June and July, and we provided that for the last meeting, a written report in lieu of staff appearing at the uh, at the meeting because the interim health agent was on vacation. And when, when did you receive that request? Uh, probably late July in advance of the August meeting. And it's now been fulfilled as of tonight? Yeah, yeah, that was pr provided at the August 16th meeting. August 16th. Mm -hmm. We requested at our June meeting okay. the reports and the hired health agent was there and refused to give them to us. Okay, when you, now when you talk about the hired health agent, you're talking Laura, about Laura. Laura was there okay. and she refused. She's a health agent, she's just not been appointed. Right, she gave, she refused to give us the reports. <coughs> well, she didn't feel comfortable giving them. Because we did not appoint her. Because she was not an appointed health agent. She was not comfortable giving the reports. Okay, so. All right. All right. Well, as a general proposition, how do you like to communicate with the staff? As, as far as our me our meetings, or as no, well, I mean, do you want do you want to communicate with the staff primarily at meetings? No, I'd love to have a conversation often with with the with a health agent or with with a health agent, preferably. Okay. I mean, when, even when Andy was uh, the chair, uh, you know, I, I don't know how often, Andy, you would speak with Steve, but uh, maybe a couple times a week or maybe oh, a month. No, no. I mean, the, the, the meetings have been for a, years now, ever since I was on the board. We all meet. Somebody from the staff um, would give the reports for the mm -hmm. inspections and the public health nurse stuff. Sometimes mm -hmm. the public health nurse would give the public health and the, uh, somebody else would give the health director or the health agent would give the, um, the health reports. Okay. And, and up until I think Ruth Clay, uh, we didn't 
<clears throat> actually, I don't think we appointed uh, anybody as our designee or health agent. A little confusing because the health agent job title is is is, not not, is, is right. So, but uh, and then I think Ruth said, "Hey, you guys, you're supposed to designate uh, health, appoint a health agent or a designee, mm -hmm. um, and uh, you can appoint me." So we appointed Ruth, and then from then on, I picked up the practice from there. And but the, to answer, to get back to your question, we have a meeting once a month. Everybody would come in. Sometimes inspectors, sometimes the public health nurse, sometimes the health director or the health agent, um, and we get all the information and review it and discuss it and decide, make sure state laws are being met. Okay. Um, I tried. No, I didn't. I typically didn't interact with Steve too much in between meetings because uh, I wanted things to be done as board. Okay. All right. You suggesting that maybe you'd like to do it differently, which is also perfectly fine. Well, as, as far as knowing what's going on in town on a day-to-day -day basis, I would think that things may happen more than once a month that you would meet in a mm -hmm. session. Yes. Okay. All right. And so, have you been attempting communications and not, and not getting any responses? Well, us not having a full-time health agent, I have not really. Most of my communications to Bob Bracey uh, are gone through Gene, a lot of them, just because he is part-time, he's got a lot to do here as the health agent, and I don't want to take up an awful lot of his time with my, my issues, so a lot of the communications have been through Gene, which we decided upon when we first uh, appointed Bob Bracey as the interim health agent. Okay. That's sort of the way we tried to set it up. All right. Okay. All right. And but that would be sort of on top of um, the way it used to it used to run. That is, you, you you're still imagining that there would be somebody that comes to each board of health meeting and makes a report of the activities of the previous month. Yes, yes. Okay. I would hope that would be yes. Okay. And the other the other two is that a comfortable arrangement for you? Mm -hmm. Okay. And to be clear, this would be something. A special role for the chair is that what you have in mind? That the chair would engage in these these in between conversations. That's been historically held to it. As, okay. lo as long as yeah. we are privy to those conversations at the board meetings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Now I will usually have a chair's report. Yeah. Okay. Will, anything that may not have been discussed in that month, I will bring up. Okay. So, um, so we've kind of talked around. Um, uh, the fact that La that Laura has not been designated pursuant to Chapter 111, Section 30. Mm -hmm. So, um, as far as I'm aware, that section of the general laws is the only section anywhere in the general laws where somebody can be designated to act in, in lieu of the board meeting um, they can be authorized to, to take public health actions in, in whenever there's an emergency or whenever it's not convenient for the board to meet, that the person doesn't have to wait around 48 hours, you know, post a meeting, all that stuff. That's a rare power that does not exist, as far as I'm aware, anywhere else in the, in the mm -hmm. uh, general laws. Mm -hmm. and, um, and there's some obvious good reasons. Mm -hmm. um, to have that, have somebody have that authority. So, um, but I understand there's some kind of an issue about about doing that. And can you explain what that issue is? If you're asking us I to discuss don't. the character or reputation of the health agent, you will need to go into executive session. No, you don't. You can go into executive session, but you're going to have to go into exec to. Um, you'd have to. Um, uh, give notice and all that stuff, but if you don't intend to do it in executive session, you can you can just do it. If there is a an issue, let's hear what it is. So I'm not quite sure what you're allowing us to do. What I'm telling you is that on two occasions, on two occasions, the issue of appointing or delegating to mm -hmm. Laura has come before the board and. Mm -hmm. In one case, there was a motion, no second. In another case, there was not even a motion. So 
So obviously there's some concern there. Yes. And, and Serious we're trying concerns. to find out trying to find out what the nature of that concern is. And I don't know what we can actually speak about in an open meeting without being in violation is the concern. Okay, and what I'm telling you is the the um, you should not say anything that inv invades the person's privacy, if that's what you're talking about. But other than that, you can discuss in open session the reasons for, for, <coughs> for your reluctance. We can discuss the reasons that we went into executive session for? No, no, we're not talking that's about it. This is not something you went same. into executive They're session. They wanted the same. That, well, that, you just told me that. I wouldn't have known that. Yes, okay. That, that, is, that is the reason that we cannot discuss it. Because it would be a constant invasion of her privacy. Which we, which we discussed in an executive session, right? Yes. I believe the con the, what's happening here is the matter is discussed in executive session, and I believe the argument is being made that if it's been discussed there, it can't be discussed here. Uh huh. And that's, that is not a sound argument. Okay. okay. The, can, can the, fact that, the fact that something was discussed in executive session does not mean that it can, if that that it, the matter can't be discussed in an open session. It just means that you can't, di you can't disclose the content of what was discussed in the executive session. If there is a concern... I don't get that distinction. Well, I'm, not asking you to tell, I'm not asking you to tell and to disclose what you talked about in your executive session. We so-and-so said this about so-and-so, anything like that. I'm just talking about what went on in your public session. Can we which ask was, Dan to weigh in? Excuse me, because Dan was at our executive session. So he knows our concerns. I know the concerns. Okay. You've admonished me not to share. <laughs> <laughs> I have admonished you not to share them. Because I, I, I did, but just in case Okay. I no, that is that is fair because because you learned about about what went on in that executive session in your official capacity. And the state ethics law is quite clear that you can't talk about what went on in an executive session mm -hmm. while the matters that, that are on the executive session were um, uh, are, still are still confidential. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So, so I'm not asking anything about what went on in the executive session. I'm only asking what went on in the public session. In the public session, there were statements made um, of reticence to appoint Laura to the, to the position of health agent. Right. Yes. And I'm asking you to explain what those what that reticence We never was. discussed those in public session. We never discussed them publicly. Okay, and that's why I'm serious. asking you to do it now. But it would be a violation of the executive session. Just for no, the same reason not. that Dan... No, what, no, it would not, because I'm not asking you to say what you said in the executive session. I'm asking you to explain what the nature of your concern was. The I was at that concern. meeting at the time. Yeah. They, they were told you... You can't talk about that. Right. <laughs> so I'm a little All right. Right. So who, uh, Not by me, they weren't told that. No, of course not. You weren't there. Yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> if I had told, because if I had been there, I would have said, yes, you can. Right. I don't know. I have to watch the video. It was okay. Dan, Dan, RC, Dan did, because I, I don't know these rules and laws, and okay. I'm just a simple person. Simple vet. I'm a simple veterinarian. So, so Dan was advising me to stop talking about what I was talking about, because it was not... It, do you remember, Dan? Vaguely, yeah. Okay. I, I was told not to talk about that stuff, so I stopped. And so now I... I now I'm confused because you're telling us to talk about something in open meeting that we have been told we cannot discuss in an open meeting. Right. It's confusing. Okay, so you were told by somebody other than me, right? Yes. Okay. So that's the difference. All right. I feel like I'm... Okay. We're uncomfortable discussing this in open meeting. All right. Okay. Even if you say so, it's okay. do you so so? Is there something? Is, is there some idea of what's going to happen going forward? Does the town have somebody else that they can appoint? I, I, we have wanted the, the board of selectmen and the town manager to investigate the concerns. Okay. We we talked yes. about that. we talked about that. And now I'm going on to something else. Okay. We we we've got a vacuum here. Okay, mm -hmm. so do we have some, is there some, so, since we can't, we don't know what the nature of the concerns are, I'm having a hard time formulating this question, <laughs> but 
is is there someone else that would qualify that you can do this? The town could hire someone else. Yes. The town could hire someone else. Does the town have a budget for that? Well, they can't have two. That that yeah, is not right. actually a personnel issue that the board of health has to address. <laughs> okay, but you, no, I'm serious. That is not that is not for the board of health. Right. Well, I mean, our concern is no. getting a qualified health agent that we can appoint. Okay. That's all we want. All right. And are you suggesting that the health agent that has been hired is not qualified? I didn't say that. Not. You cannot use that. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I didn't say she was not qualified. I just said this is not about her competency. I think the letter I passed you. Uh -huh. Two minutes ago, we'll tell you everything you need to know about the person that made the complaint. Okay, I got that, it. You said to say that was public record. Yes, it is. We're talking about record. Donna Pierce. Yeah. So um, you, you can see what the complaints were. All right. If this is a public record. Why don't we all have it then? I've never seen it. I've never seen it. Either. I think it's time you for us to, to get it? it. Can you throw it on yeah. the screen? It's long. I'm trying to forward. Good. It. Throw it on the screen. Discuss. Public. Public. Do you have to discuss? What is kind of a projector? Well, if the uh, town council says that the letter, you can discuss the letter openly. Yes. That is a public record, that letter. It was writ oh, written by a, a, public a, a private citizen to a town official. So, can we address a statement in her letter that concerns us? Sure. Ray, can I ask a, 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 maybe a simple, a, a simpleton question, um, and, and that is, um, what, what's the, what do we, what's the goal? What's our goal here? No, I don't have. One. Oh, yeah, I have. Do we have a goal? Okay, I don't have a goal. My goal, other than there's been a whole lot of questions yes. raised, and I'm trying to get as much information out on the table as I possibly can, so that people understand what we're doing. We've got, we, you know, there's. That it was a management problem that I'm not, um, yeah. which is that we don't have a health agent. We have a health agent that doesn't hasn't delegated the authority to, right. that that's causing some difficulty. Well, we health some, inspectors and things like that. Right. So, but that's that's not my goal. I'm I'm just a lawyer. You know, what You're do just I know? A lawyer. I, what do I know? What's, well, it also I strikes me that we actually are paying two health agents as a result of this. Yes, we are. What, okay. What's our goal here, guys? I'd like to get to the bottom of this. I think I want to make. I want to know if the public health in Redding is being served right now, and are we at risk because we don't have a designated health agent? So if we can kind of get around to that stuff, fair I question. Mean, uh, you know, we're we're charged. I mean, we appoint him, and we appoint you. So we basically this is where the buck stops. I need, I need to understand if whether or not public health is being taken care of in Reading. Apparently, there is no appointed health agent that acts on behalf of the board when there's not meetings going on, and if God forbid it, and something happens, is this town at risk? I need to know that as a selectman. And, and, and so, I don't know, I've been listening to this now for 45 minutes or an hour, and I'm not really sure I'm getting the from you know, I'm not really sure that I confidently that we're protecting the public health in Reading. That's, my, that's the only thing, agenda item I have. Is I would say we're very Redding impaired at this time, Barry. I think you're asking a fair question, and I would say that we're in an impaired state. We've got a part-time person that we're paying in addition to an employee that Human Resources and Management hired. And the, the stalemate is that we have a Board of Health that feels that they're more qualified to make a hire than, than the appropriate people in Human Resources and Management. And it does leave us in an impaired state. Well, There's we, no question about that. Well, I operated with a part-time. I operated with a part-time health agent, and I don't Andy, think the we're only, I'm sorry to interrupt. The only this meeting is here is a matter of fact finding. Oh, the okay. reason is this board, as a as a body, has not heard and <coughs> has not had disclosed to it all the facts and circumstances. Mm -hmm. I certainly have. <coughs> and part of this is just to get a baseline. It's not to uh, argue with the data. It's yeah. Not, it's not. It's to listen to the data okay. and decide what we do next. I share Barry's concern that. The public health of the town is not well served in an environment where we don't have full-time employees, that are particularly ones that have been hired to do the job, yeah. and for which no stated objection by either the hiring authority or anyone else has been made, to mm -hmm. my knowledge, mm -hmm. that carries any merit and that has any, any fact-based ass assessment behind I it. I see. I see. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, so where we were. So let's get to that point. So, where, where, where we here. So, so if I give you this. <laughs> what is that? It's her email. That's email. the same email? The same email. Okay. Would this help you? Because I am concerned that we can't disclose anything. Well, you this can certainly disclose anything that's in that letter. That's a public record. That's a public record. So is there something in that letter that... Yes. Uh, I'm sorry, I, yes, they handed it to me this. at the time that I... There is that, something in this Okay. that concerns us. All right. A change. Okay, so... I'll read the... I was told... So this is a an email that... Um, it's really from Donna Pierce using her it's, husband's... It's from Donna Pierce, right. and, and it's addressed to you, Beth. That's yes. the former okay. health nurse. Yes, I got it. Right. I was told to provide proof of the pre-approved conferences to and proof of the mileage. I did. This was crossed out and was denied. My computer printout was not accepted. Another was printed by the health agent, and the mileage form was filled out by her, not me, and it was 10 miles less. That, is that what we're talking about? Yes. Okay. And so. So this, so this, so this is the concern that that has. Are you starting at the beginning of the letter? No, no. She she okay. pointed out part of the le letter that she said this is the part that that she's. Um, I then filled up. Oh, sorry. Okay. Keep. So, do I understand then that by by glancing, as this is up and down in the, this public record, mm -hmm. that the Board of Health has embraced the idea that they need to interact on the personnel issues that a supervisor you know, takes with regard, I mean, it seems like to me this is an internal management issue, this is not a Board of Health issue. I don't, I'm not seeing anything about the Board we of Health. Not, we have no purview over any administrative records. Precisely. We agree. Precisely. So why, why would you take exception to an ordinary Because the, a record is a record. But you just said you had no purview. So a record is not a record as far as the Board of Health. Okay. okay. We can't discuss this. This is the basis for our concern, but we can't discuss the details of it because it. it, it well, I mean, there's a there's a letter. It's a public record. It's we're not we're reading we're not it. We're embracing personnel issues that are under the purview of another department. This goes to our concern about. We can't say that though. Yes, this goes to our concerns about why we have declined to, to appoint this person. Are any of those concerns on the letter in front of us? That is that is the concern that, that you're citing, right? Yes. yes. It's, it's not the rest of the letter. It's just that singular concern. So it regarding a supervisor overseeing it was an expense record. Regarding, regarding record keeping. Okay. Well, it's a trip okay. report, right? It's a reimbursement. It's a request by an employee to be reimbursed for, for valid and, and reasonable expenses. If it's yeah. mileage, it's IRS. With the valid in quotation marks. Okay. And so what appears to have happened was that um, she submitted a expense report. And her allegation is that it was not accepted and that when it says the health agent there, they, she means Laura, right? Mm -hmm. That Laura changed it. Yes. And, and gave her 10 miles less mileage. Mm -hmm. So we're arguing over $5.60? Exactly. And, and it's, you know, in, in it's business, it's common, it's commonplace in business. Yeah. 
for the person who oversees and approves expenses to often recommend a change because for don't say no. That was not recommended. That was not recommended. That's not a recommendation, John. That's a change. I do I do a couple of dozen expense reports a month for my employees. I have complete purview to question them and challenge them and, and delete if it's if it's an irregular. I'm not suggesting that's the case here. That's the job of management. I check every expense report. I check every itinerary. I check every plane ticket just to make sure it's. And I've never had a problem other than an innocent oversight or an error. But that's the purview of a manager. That's why you pay managers to take a look at after their employees. I, I understand. I'm a manager as well. But this is a different issue. The than validity of all public health records is essential. This is a it's not a public report. health record. Is, and I am making just a statement because we did go into executive session for number one. Okay. okay. Do you have other? So what <coughs> you're telling me is that. There is a disagreement between Laura and uh, Donna over the mileage report. We don't have an, an investigation. We only have this information. As okay. far as I'm aware, the public health nurse has never been interviewed regarding No, but really, I mean, it, she says so it's wrong. Stating She's that. saying that it's wrong. There's no she is stating, no yes. She is stating, She's that, stating that her that record was, was correct. Altered. And that it was her record was altered. Her record was changed. Is okay. what she is stating. Oh wow. Okay. Um, and that is the ba that is the 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 source of your reticence. Is that correct to say? Yes. Okay. Okay, so that brings us to item six on the, on the list, which is um, recent events involving the closure of some downtown businesses due to sewage issues. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, in the absence of a, of a delegation to Laura or to somebody, do you have a plan for responding to emergencies like that? So now may I ask my question? I'm gonna get hammered uh, again. <laughs> no, I'd actually like no. Ray to finish his inquiry. Well, I, I, so is there a plan for responding to emergencies? We have a appointed health agent, and he is responsible for emergencies. And when he goes on vacation, it is his job to appoint somebody to cover for him, which is the normal protocol. Or have somebody cover for him. That's he has the normal vacation thing. coverage. All vacation health agents coverage. have vacation coverage. People that That's have the protocol. And, there's, and I don't believe, unless somebody can show me that there's a law saying that a health agent has to reopen an establishment. A health inspector can inspect it, deem it clean, or the, the problem is rectified, and then they can reopen it. So that's the emergency Okay, so, plan. so in this case, I understand that there was some need to, to um, ask uh, some businesses to close, is that correct? Somebody closed some businesses. We don't know who did that. Because we have not received the report. And is there no record of the business being closed? We have not seen that report. Yeah. We should, yeah. All right, can you're the Board of Health. Can you, can you shed any light on this? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, this was the week before last, August 15th, when there was an issue. And our interim health agent, Bob Bracey, was on vacation. And um, our inspector, who's been also been appointed, um, had a conflict with another meeting. So he was not available. So the only place we could turn to was the Board of Health. Who closed the establishment down, Jean? I believe they closed on their own. So why was Bob Bracey's vacation coverage back up not notified? The inspector was his backup, but he had a conflict. So North Reading's backup for, for Bob was our part-time health agent. Bob Bracey is a health director for North Reading. I, I'm struggling to imagine that he went on vacation and did not arrange coverage with area health agents. For yeah, we have North a part-time inspector who's also the health agent in Stoneham, John Fralick. 
and he's available to assist us <laughs> as we need. Okay. So, so, so can I ask so, a question? So, so our, uh, your hired health agent, but not appointed, um, had no power to intercede no. or no desire to intercede? She can do inspections. No authority, she can do no authority inspections. to intercede. She can do inspections. She doesn't need us to appoint her to do inspections. So she could have gone yes. down there. She, yes, she, she does. She appointed as an inspector. But she not done. That's Nobody wrong. asked us to do That's that. That's wrong. But it's interesting. She has inspected camps. So what's the difference? She's been doing inspections for the town of Reading without our appointment. So for some reason on that evening, she, inspected she couldn't inspect July 6th. Austin Prep. John Smith's soccer camp. I mean, the whole thing is if there's, sorry to use the word crap in a restaurant. <laughs> we, 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 Not we, to put too fine a no, no, no. I, it depends what restaurant. To be, to be eloquent. But um, yeah. we just want to get somebody in there to uh, shut uh, it down. Or to reopen if they've cleaned it up. And, and um, you know, they're, anyone who's trained in, um, these f on the food code is, is uh, can say, yeah, this looks good. I don't know whether that's, the, you know, uh, that's the way. Okay, so so whoever has been designated as the health agent would have the authority to go in and order it shut down without a vote of the Board of Selectmen, a reward of health. Correct. That, we're all clear on that. And food Bob, inspectors also say, go and inspect and say, oh, and find things, violations, yes. and they say, you need to stop doing that, you, you know, so they, they right. make calls, too. That's right. I mean, okay. The, the okay, so, but in this case, we, in this <coughs> case, the, the uh, Bob Bracey was on vacation, his designated alternative or, or, or substitute was not available because it was at some other meeting. And we don't know who this vacation backup is. We, yes, we do. It, didn't you just tell us that it was the health inspector? Yes. In Reading, that's the health inspector. Mm -hmm. His full-time job, mm -hmm. and who's covering that, is of no concern in Reading. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there was a designee who was not available. Okay. Yet, we had a, yet we had a full-time person who's not appointed mm -hmm. and couldn't act. That, that puts everybody in. But she's been doing inspections, so why couldn't she do an inspection under an emergency? She did, Nancy has documentation that she did an inspection. But in this particular case, she couldn't do well, an what. Well, she, what she didn't have the authority to do was to order it shut down. Yeah. It sounded like nobody did. Well, the facility well, apparently shut itself down. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Then, inspectors, can, inspectors can shut facilities down. But in this well, case, it was obviated the by the facility shut shutting down. itself down. That, right. to me, just punctuates this whole situation. Right. That's a serious, serious health so issue. So if they right. shut themselves yeah. down, they, they also shut themselves. They have got themselves back running. No, they with didn't. No, uh, no, they didn't. No, they had to have Chosen not to shut down. Right. Of course, it wasn't. Okay. All right. We we want the same thing. We want to protect public health in Reading. We have serious concerns about that. That's our concern too. That's our only concern. We you guys have a ton of other things to do. That's our only job is to protect the public health in Reading. We have no other agenda. Well, then do your job and appoint the health agent. We don't think that it would be a good idea at this time. Because there, you have a personal a vendetta going against the I don't the even know this person. Have. I don't even no, know this know, person. One at a time, please. I, I like the accusation, Andy, though. Andy, yeah, one at a time, please. That. Andy. Okay. Bill Dundee? No, I'm done. Okay. I, I have a question. Mary? Ask that question. So, um, Ray. Yes? Who has the authority to hire the health agent? The, um, it, the hire. Town manager. But he signs right. the offer letter. He signs, he signs the offer letter. The, um, that's in the charter. If, right. This is not something new. But this has been in right. the charter, I think, since the beginning. It's always been that way. And, and who does that health agent, you know, and, and on the line org chart, who does the health agent report to? Community well, services. The assistant town manager. The assistant town manager. And who, who does the public health nurse report to? The health agent. And in this case, we have separation where the appointment is different from the hiring. Absolutely. And both are needed to be effective. Correct. Right. So, but then, so understand what the, the effect of the appointment is, is to give the health agent the full powers of the Board of Health right. to act whenever their, the Board of Health right. is not behalf. available to, to right. act as a group. That, that's, you know, the, the, the 
but nobody in the planning department get, gets to gets to act in um, in the place of CBD, CPDC. Um, you know, they have to go to a meeting and get the vote. Right. But because of the nature of public health stuff, sometimes, it's, emergencies it's sometimes things yeah. have to happen faster than that. Mm. So the point of that is to have someone who has the full authority of the Board of Health to act. So my next question is, um, is the town of Reading at risk either on a health basis or on a legal basis by not having an appointed health agent? Is there a scenario that can occur where this town is at risk legally uh, or, or health-wise by not having an appointed health agent? Well, embedded in that question is the assumption that we don't have a, an appointed health agent, and I think the Board of Health would say, yes, we do, because we have Bob Bracey. Now, Bob Bracey is, you know, not so much, it, the idea of hiring Bob Bracey was, as I understand it, to fill in until a new hire appeared. I mean, it wasn't intended that he would continue to exercise that authority sort of indefinitely. Yeah, Bob, was he appointed for a term certain or an indefinite term? No, but I can say that he intent, fully intended to resign as soon as Laura was right. hired and appointed, and he had no desire to go beyond that term. So he's working on an overtime basis doing both jobs right now for North Reading? I suppose that's one way. For DM out. or just? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's not technically overtime. He's working two jobs. Okay. But Put, so now we've highlighted the assumption in your question. If we are, if we are talking about is the town pr protected if they have nobody exercising that authority, I would say the answer is no, because um, then the only way that that authority can be exercised is by calling a meeting of, uh, of the Board of Health, and that's not always possible. I mean, these people are volunteers. Sure, they, absolutely. They have other lives. You do have other lives, right? Not right now. They, uh, <laughs> and, and, um, Ditto. Yeah, <laughs> we also yeah. may okay. appoint anyone of our choosing as our appointed health agent. We can appoint um, John Fraley. We can appoint anyone of our choosing. We can appoint a local physician as our as our appointed health agent. As a matter of law, that is correct. Yes. As a matter of management, I it is not. Mm, it is not, not ideal. ideal. Let's right. say. Can we do that? Yes, we can. Yes. But we have to have the, a complete hmm. trust in whoever we appoint as mm -hmm. our legal representatives. And the concern that we have, that we continue to impress upon this board, is that one issue in the letter, that you seem to think from a business viewpoint it is no big deal. But when it comes to public health, it is a very big deal to alter something. Was that alter? Either for $5 and whatever sense it might be. Are you, say, are you stating that we should extrapolate that other records have been altered? I am saying that is a concern that this board has, which is why we have said we have serious concerns about this appointee. Have you determined if and that... And it is right there for everyone to see. Hang on. Have you determined if that had merit? I have at, The board has asked repeatedly for three months... Yeah for a formal investigation, but, for a follow-up to the public health nurses. But isn't it enough to hear from the folks that have access and have the knowledge without disclosing the details that this is not material, that there's a, there's a rational explanation behind it? Have you spoken to Donna Pierce? I have not. Then I think that that would be a good place to start. I actually would disagree. I think I'd talk to her employer first. Dan. Uh, Gene, I'm going to ask this as delicately as I can. I know there's some sensitive issues involved. The expense report in question, was that legitimately submitted for a conference that was actually attended? Well, you we can't have, answer it, then don't. We but, have um, gone over this in some detail, as you can imagine, and um, <coughs> we have found discrepancies. This is not a matter of um, just you know, off the cuff, looking at a document and altering it. Right. It's as you were saying, this is what we do as managers. We review submittals, and when we find, whether it was an honest error or something else, whatever was going on with that document mm -hmm. was erroneous. Yep. And it needed, we were protecting the town of Reading. That's right. So that we have taken our job seriously. 
and the taxpayer's money is being spent correctly. And the reason why we appoint our health agent is to make sure these decisions are not politicized. Okay. Well, we've gone past that. I think that, that, yeah. well, <laughs> that isn't That isn't exactly what town council just said. Um, Gene, did the employee sign off on the corrected trip report? So the employee accepted the correction. So done. The hell is this? Done. The employee accepted the correction. He said, she done. said. That's her opinion. That? The employee. Do opinion. That? You don't I've need been to know. Asking for this for for three months. No, been the, ignored. The employee accepted the correction. We didn't know that until this very minute. How are we going to know that? You're no. not in the management so, chain. You're you're not the, have, you don't need you to know. Need this to is, know. Our, it's this is to, our purview: is to be able to right. trust the health agent. We, this is what we have. We don't have any of this other information because nobody cared to provide it. We were just treated I, I, like With all due respect, I, I think this is out of your purview. This is a matter of management and employment. You don't have a budget. You don't have expense reports. You don't have responsibility to review. And if there's an anomaly, it's up to the paid staff and daytime town government to do it. They've done that. I've just heard moments ago that the employee accepted the change of some $5.30, and life goes on. I can't believe for two seconds that we would hold up this subject matter for $5 for a matter that was resolved by signature weeks before. It's beyond comprehension. It, it is not beyond comprehension when you are talking about public health records. This we are is, all in the health John, field. can I ask a question of the town council? When I'm, when I'm done, yes. Yes, thank you. I believe the question here is not about health whatsoever. It's about the reimbursement of a trip report. I went into a trip, I got X per mile, I paid Y for my ticket, here's my expenses. A correction was made, both parties signed, we're happy, they move on. Nothing or we're unhappy and we move on. It, you know, you it doesn't on. matter. Nothing to do with health. There isn't one thing to do with health up there except for the <coughs> nature of the trip. But the, the transaction yeah. you're highlighting has got nothing to do with health at all. It's about documentation of a record. It's a trip report and it's wrong. Mm. They corrected it. It's now correct. It went from being wrong to right. That's good. I don't read that in that. No. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, Andy. All right, Andy was first. Um, uh, qu question regarding uh, the purview of appointing a board of health designee or agent. Um, does the do the board of do we as a body um, ask that. Uh, have uh, are we legally allowed to be involved in the appointment of a health agent? Like, this has been a pretty intense involvement at least uh, the last hour and a half. But, um, oh, so I guess I, is this board, uh, is that under the purview of this board to have this sort of uh, uh, involvement in the... Uh, in the decision that the board of health... In, in the, right, in, in appointing a health designee yeah. or agent. So the answer is yes, okay. um, and the reason the answer is yes is because you are the appointing authority for the Board of Health, right. and you also, under the Charter, mm. um, have the ability to uh, remove a member of the Board of Health, okay? And um, so, um, so that means that at least at, at you know, sort of a gross level, mm. you are responsible for oversight. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the time, <coughs> the best form of oversight is to leave yeah. them alone and let right. them do yeah. their job. Mm -hmm. And um, that's how it usually and works. That's, you know, I would consider that to be the norm. And to the extent that there are minor bumps along the way, you have staff that can generally deal with it. it, it where we where we seem to be today is that mm -hmm. we have we, we're at loggerheads over mm -hmm. over Laura. Unfortunately. Yeah. Unfortunately. And um, so um, the board, before the board can figure out if it wants to do anything about this, it needs to understand what's, what's going on. And you know, it, to the extent that, I'm sorry this has taken so long, it's but, okay. but, I, you to but what's at least it, where, where we've got is we know what the concern is. Right. And now you, know, you can, you, you, they, they've expressed the reason for their reticence. Mm -hmm. Now you now you now you know what it is. It's not a mystery anymore. And I guess the other burning line question, really, which which the board 
uh, would have to answer is, uh, as Barry brought up, the is the public health in Reading, are they, do you feel it's protected right now? No, he's a lawyer. He's not his judge. No, lawyer only. No, I'm asking the board. Oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> because we can't determine that as the board of selectmen, nor can you. I only said the board, only the board of health actually, is empowered okay. to do that. Well, yeah, so I guess right. I would ask the question to the board of health are you guys uh, protecting the public health? Yeah, Andy, isn't that our call? It's yeah. the highest well, it's it's yeah, but It's the also board important to know it's kind of what. By state yeah. law, it's the board of health. Oh. We're not qualified. Yeah. If yeah. you're missing a staff member who's playing an essential role, how can it be that that is as equivalent to the same scenario with the employee present functioning? And it's not. How can it possibly be the same? Well, I would ask. You lost a link in the mm -hmm. chain. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we're all, you know, we're all trying to protect public health in, in Reading, uh, why wouldn't the, the employee go inspect a restaurant where there was uh, a release of stuff? Again, we had, to if I understand to cover it correctly, the a North Reading temporary um, assistance right. until such time as the health agent could be nominated. But he's obviously sent got, health inspectors to these. Hang on, this situations. guy's got a full time job in North Reading. Oh, I know that. He's I working work whatever time he can for Reading on, in extremis. Yeah, yeah. It's not surprising that the poor guy went on vacation. We now have one layer of backup That's in not that the guy. Issue. That's why not, didn't I she worked go with him for the months. restaurant. We know all we that. We have other inspectors that we send into these situations because no one guy is always. So the question is if we had an employee who's capable of inspecting a restaurant and there was a release of stuff there, um, why wasn't it, why don't we have it inspected? Why don't we have it go and check it out? Yeah, with all due respect, I think we're looking at the wrong end of the problem. I, I, I disagree, but that's okay. John? So can I get a point of clarification, mm -hmm. Ray? When Andy asked you a question about whether or not we, I just need to be, get this clear, um, whether we have the ability as a board of selectmen absent the Board of Health acting to appoint this health agent who has been hired and vetted by our management team. Mm -hmm. And with the participation of the chair Correct. who concurred in the decision. So my point of clarification is absent them fulfilling that responsibility, are we empowered as a Board of Selectmen mm -hmm. as the appointing authority of the board and also as the safe guardians of the town? Um, are we allowed to appoint Laura, if we wanted to do so? No. Okay, then I misunderstood because yeah, I thought I you thought. said yes. Yeah, no, what I said was no. No, I understood. you oh, okay. have oversight over yeah. the board. Oh, okay. So it's a, that's their and job. That doesn't mean right. that you that's can exercise solely their the job. power. You have to walk through the process. Right. It's their, a process question. Right. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you, if, if you believe that they are not, if you believe they're not acting appropriately, mm -hmm. You have a remedy, but it's a harsh one. It is a harsh one. So, so right. let me be. You can, you can, you can so, to, so to follow up here. on that, uh, to follow up on that, um, the Board of Health has made a statement as a majority, okay, not yes. unanimously, but they've made a statement as a majority that they're inclined not to do the appointment of this person because they have open questions, some of which are aired in a um, recently um, retired employee's letter. Um, none of which have been corroborated, but we have found out tonight that, in fact, um, there has been sign-off by both parties involved in this question. So, so, one correction I would like to make to what you said, and if I, if I, if I misunderstand, if it, I didn't hear some of which is laid out in that letter. What I heard was the specific is, sentence is, that's the, just the, is the reason. Is the reason. Is the reason. Yeah. Okay. So not some of the reason. It is the reason. So the board of health chooses. That yes, that's correct. The board of health chooses to not fulfill that obligation based on that concern. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, now let's talk about the board of selectmen because you're our council. So, our council too. so in order to get this problem <laughs> solved, too. <laughs> there is a process, mm -hmm. and that process right. then mm -hmm. falls back to us to ultimately solve this problem. 
if if you wish to pursue the remedy that you have available to you. Okay, just, you just charter, trying to understand options. The charter gives you the option of giving them notice. You go through the details of it if you want, but but you basically give them notice. You tell them the reasons for your action, or your proposed action, and you hold a hearing. And at the end of the hearing, you need to make a finding whether those reasons justify, Got it. whether you have a factual basis for the reason, reasons and whether they justify you taking action. All of, all of that process is laid out in the charter. Got it. And, um, is that cause? Is that what it's not, doesn't say cause, it says that reasons. Causes. Reasons. Okay. So, um, you, that is a whole process that's available to you. It's, okay. you know, it, it's, um, <coughs> it, 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 it's a significant action to take. And so, um, you know, you have to decide what you want yep. to do, but that's the, uh, um, uh, that's the old remedy you have. You do not have the remedy to say they won't appoint them, so we'll do it. Got it. Very. Okay. So, so, so my, my question is, Ray, um, the, only, the only tool we have in this thing is a machete, not a scalpel. Exactly. Yep. So, so, our, so the, the only action that we could take is to remove this bo board for cause and oh, appoint so. a, a Not for cause, for reason. For reason and appoint a new board. Right. Isn't there some kind of a mediation role that can be played? Yeah. Yeah. Get people in a room, shut the door, and nobody leaves until there's a, a resolution to this. I'm looking at that article, and you know, Nancy, you're saying it's about altering documents. I, I'm looking at that. I'm, just, I'm, I'm looking at that letter, take this and make sure that I'm looking this is at what that letter. They are and what I them. see is a disgruntled employee complaining to a board mm -hmm. about management, and that, as opposed to going to HR, to HR, or right. even even her direct supervisor. That's right. So. Essentially, it's a human resource issue. Now, it's not about the five dollars. Barry, I've spoken to the HR chief. No, no complaint was ever filed with her on this issue. Right. No. So I, I guess no. I'm curious as to why you felt it was so important to sort of, you know, w walk away from the. I mean, there's so many public health issues that are looming that we haven't even talked about, but to sort of get embroiled over what looks to me to be a disgruntled employee who's who's ticked off at her boss. You know, I, th that to me is the part I'm trying to wrap my arms around, you know. There, well, it, it's worse than that. She thinks her boss is the Board of Health. And she refused to do a weekly report to the health agent, which was reasonably requested, to find out what that employee did. But that employee right. is, is no longer yeah. here. I'm but, just but, saying but, that. Yeah, the but my question is, is, is that. Here to defend the issue is right. important. Right. Yeah. But my point is, is that. It's in the letter. Why did you, as the Board of Health, feel like it was to, 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 to Take, use all that oxygen on an unhappy employee. It is not as, about an unhappy employee. It is about changing a document. I, I'm, I'm looking at that letter, and it's about four paragraphs I'm of... I'm only looking at the most important okay. thing, Barry, that you keep minimizing. Changing a document. And town council <coughs> has in front of him the reason why Cheryl Sabaro asked this be referred town council. It is not the, our purview to deal with this. It is not our purview. It is on, right. it is on but you. But you use that as, a, as, a, as, a, as rationale for not appointing the health agent. The sole yes. reason. Okay. Okay. So, time out for a moment up. here because she said, I have in front of me and so I want to tell you what I have in front of me. Which um, yes, that's Nancy, Nan Nancy provided it is a copy of Mass General Law 268, Section 6A. That this is uh, the criminal statutes of the of the Commonwealth. It says, whoever, being an officer or employee of the Commonwealth, or of any political subdivision thereof, so that means a town, or of any authority created by the General Court, in the course of his official duties executes, files, or publishes any false written report, minutes, or statement, knowing the same to be false in a material matter, shall be punished by a fine of not more than $1,000 or by imprisonment for not more than one year or by such fine and imprisonment. So, so, so is the person who filed the erroneous expense report the subject mm -hmm. of this, or is the person who 
yeah. use their managerial uh, right and discretion to change it, and that ha not even being yeah, disputed. Is that the is that the sort of direction of the? And it also says sure. material. We're talking about a five dollar bill. Okay, and I, I'm I'm pretty sure that um, that it would be any prosecutor would say. In, um, nobody is, it's impossible to say somebody knows it to be false. So, um, that's true. The, um, um, uh, you know, part of it is, is you, not just that you filed a, a statement that was false, but you did it knowing it to be false. Mm -hmm. And knowing I assume, I assume that, um, that the employee who submitted it believed it to be true and that the the, uh, that Laura, when she reviewed it, believed that her change was true. Uh, well, she I she knowingly be altered it, and that is the concern. But doesn't she have that she right? She has the management right to it change says, an expense report. It knowing the same to be false in a material manner. So it, it's not a matter of knowingly altering it, it's a matter of knowing it, knowing it to be false. I'm trying to understand what's in the health agent's best interest to save a town five. I mean, I, exactly. I, I don't That's exactly <laughs> exactly right. Why? It should not be doing things in the best interest of the town. It should always be in the best interest of public health. Okay, so so that's so, the concern about altering records. So so dispute. So basically, she has to abrogate her right as a manager. <laughs> Right, in order to satisfy the Board of Health. So any employee, so now what you're saying, any employee now can walk in and say, I went to Dallas on a, on a, on a in Vegas. Here's my expense report, and if it's challenged, I'm, 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 yes. and if it's challenged by management and changed, you're going to file criminal charges. I, I, am I, am I, am I'll I do, missing I'll something? Do you no, one we're better. Not, we're not you're, talking oh, about business. We're talking about public health. Right. The reason why a health agent reports to the Board of Health is to ensure public health safety. Not, Not to save, to save the, the town, town $5. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm. But if that's the case, why would one deny the town the benefit of an employee already hired, vetted, and approved unanimously, as we just heard, from serving in her, appoint in her capacity? Isn't that the real risk? Yes. Why would you deny the yes. town the 25,000 employ the 25,000 citizens in the town because every report Pardon she me. submits I'm Pardon? going to question um, That's actually I would applaud this individual this individual That's did right. exactly what you'd like a manager to do and in fact had she failed to doc document it and failed to correct it and submitted it she would be oddly enough knowingly submitting a false albeit trivial document she would know it to be false the very circumstance you claim exists is actually there in the in the reverse. If she failed to correct it, knew it was incorrect, and submitted it, she'd be submitting a false document. This is this is what I would want every manager I ever hired to do. Not because you doubt people, because people make mistakes all the time. And this is a relatively innocent mistake. It's not a matter of character. I don't think anyone's doubting the character of the submitter or the character of the individual who corrected it. That's normal discourse in business. Well, there are some people that are questioning. There are some, but, you know, accidents happen and mistakes happen. Oh, I forgot a receipt. I didn't have it. Here it is in my bag. Um, Dan? Can we get out of here? i got to go home. <laughs> yeah, I haven't found it. I'm on overtime. Okay. All right. Um, so, you want me to go on to the pesticide regulation? That's the last item. Yes, please. As long as you're yeah, here. Yeah, please. Okay, so as I understand the current version of the draft regulations, they're focused on the town sidewalks and tree lawns. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, and these belong to the town because they're part of the rights of way, mm -hmm. all right, associated with the town streets. And so, <clears throat> Board of Selectmen are the road commissioners, so um, those lands are under the care, custody, and control of the Board of Selectmen. We all in agreement on that? Well, actually, it's incorrect because the Board of Health can actually implement these regulations based on mass law that I think the chair and I have both looked at. But we're more than happy to have the Board of Selectmen take that over to get these regulations up and running. Okay, so when you say you have the authority to do this, what law are you referring to? Uh, 
Board of Health and Health Commissioners may make reasonable health regulations. <coughs> this is Health Regulations 19.2. Um, under Mass Practical Municipal Law, <coughs> let's see. Um, I don't know if you have the actual one, John. Although, do we do we have to get into could what? Just, yeah. Do we have to get into that, or would it? Couldn't we just work with the board? We're happy to do that. Okay. Get this going. All right. And we're so happy you, to you have a plan to propose these regulations to the board of selectmen? I Is think that we, what we've worked with our liaison on right. that. Okay. Good. Okay. okay. So, um, so the important thing that you need to understand is there is a state pesticide law. Mm -hmm. It says that ex the exclusive regulatory authority over pesticides pesticides is vested in the state, and mm -hmm. there has been Supreme Court rulings mm -hmm. that limit what boards of health can do. So your mm -hmm. exercise of what well, we lawyers like to call it the police power, mm -hmm. has been completely preempted by state law. So you have no regulatory authority. Okay. The, um, if you have, uh, now, anybody who owns property can make rules for what goes on on their property. So just because, just because um, uh, state law allows the application of pesticides, pesticides, the town could, in its wisdom, decide we're not going to use pesticides on town property, okay? But because of the way we are, rec that's not an exercise of their regulatory authority, that's their exercise of their authority property. as the owner of the property. Mm -hmm. Just like you in your garden can decide I only use organic um, uh, uh, materials, if that's what you choose, mm -hmm. you're entitled to do that. Sim similarly, the town as the owner of property has the authority to do that. Now, what makes things a little cumbersome is that, that the way the town is organized is we have care, custody, and control of different properties are in different um, entities. Mm -hmm. And so, so things that are within the care, custody, and control of the Board of Selectmen, it's, um, it's up to the Board of Selectmen to decide whether they want to go along with your recommendation. So if your plan is to propose something to the, to, the, uh, to the Board of Selectmen, then the Board of Selectmen can decide whether that, that's what they want to do. Mm -hmm. and, and you can work together on, and, uh, and obviously my office is available mm -hmm. to do the drafting or to assist with the drafting or review other people's drafts, all kinds of things that you normally see that we, we do. Um, okay. We, we have done that, too. We have submitted to you. Yes. We did get your opinion on that's it. That's right. And that was the one sticking point that, mm -hmm. that, that okay. came out of it. So, um, in the meantime, though, while these things are still just a proposal, it appears that some people in the public, um, and, and in particular some pesticide companies, mm -hmm. are uh, under the impression the regulations are already in place. Do we know how that happened? I, I, maybe they've been watching our board meetings because mm -hmm. we've been talking about them for two years. For two years we've okay. been talking about this. Okay. I hope that's because we've been trying to publicize it. Okay, so have, and so, so have you involved them in, in, in these discussions? We invited Mr. Reed from True Green last year, but he um, did not accept their invitation to come to a board meeting. Okay. And we were proposing a public hearing mm -hmm. okay. until uh, I got your last, your last response. Okay. Which, mm -hmm. All right. Mr. Chairman. Okay. Yes, Dave. Did any member of the Board of Health uh, contact one of these companies and in any way direct them what they to, as to what they could or could not do on a tree lawn at any time? We submitted to Mr. Reed drafts of our pesticide regulations. Mr. Reed's with True Lawn? Yeah. We had invited him last year. All right. And we also sent him um, drafts of, but he never got back to me as to whether or not. And when were those drafts sent last year sometime? Earlier this year? Um, I sent him two. I sent him one last year and one this year. These are already in place. These, are, these regulations, it already is illegal to put pesticides on town property. So that's already 
Yeah. How, how did you get that? Well, there's there's um, the schools. There's a there's a right, there's a thing in the there's regulations already about, about well, that. Could, that could be regulations the property owner imposed. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. it's it's. So I, be, I, I believe so I believe I may mm -hmm. be misspeaking, but what uh, what we were understanding was that it already is that's town property, the tree lawn. You can't treat that that property with any pesticides because it's not your property. You can do your own. I don't think that's correct. Um, your own private property, but Just town like you property can't cut down the trees on the tree. Line town either. property can be treated by town, but not by private people. So, in our assumption was that these were really just educational, and we didn't really have any intent. That okay, we so, 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 so we're not really intending to enforce let, this. Let me. I'm sorry. We're not intending to go around and police this. We don't have the resources. It was just educate. really educational. We had com we had a complaint from a citizen. And that's what this all started from. That they were walking and there was a tremendous amount of pesticides on the tree lines. That's what we were responding to. Okay. So it was really an educational piece. Okay. Not that, and our understanding was that it was already. These were. I'm, I'm not aware of that. any floodman rule or policy that prohibits the line um, mm -hmm. use of pesticides on the tree lines. Or school property. Or well, it's a proper, or no, town property. Or is there property. a DPW rule or regulation? I don't know. I can't speak for the I schools. That I, was be, I would not be surprised. Many school yes. districts mm -hmm. do have rules about the application. They do. Uh, yes, and so they might, they might very well. Yeah. But as things, sit, as things sit yeah. today, mm -hmm. the application of of pesticides on the tree lawn has not been the subject of any. Um, not for at least the last four years. Yeah, I haven't heard for that. sure. Okay, now, I, I'm not aware of any any restriction that exists today. And just like we we're more than happy to let property owners mow the tree lawn. Exactly. No, not more than happy. Very appreciative. The uh, uh, I, I would advise the board that if they wish to take a position on this, that they should do so affirmatively. Um, and otherwise, that we should operate under the assumption that that whatever people do on the tree lawn, at least in front of their own houses, is is uh, up to them. Uh, is with your permission. Right. Yeah. Can I ask a couple of other questions? How many total parties were contacted with regard to the drafts, as you put it? Um, I met with actually DPW once, but sent a lot of emails to DPW. So that's one party. How about private parties? Um, private parties meaning. Oh, also, I worked treatment. with the uh, Board of Health in uh, Marblehead and with the um, several private citizens. These regulations are actually copied. I have to give credit to Marblehead almost verbatim to their regulations. But how many private companies were contacted regarding a review of the drafts? Oh, just one, Mr. Gr uh, Mr. Reed. Okay. And and, and, and that came out of another private citizen's request that we contact him. That was about a year and a half ago. And what was the thought process by which a draft of another town was presented to a Reading business um, without the involvement of, the, of anyone other than the Board of Health? I didn't present it to a Reading business. Mr. Green works in Reading, does he? No, Tr Mr. Reed. Mr. Reed works in Reading? Yeah. Uh, no, he's, a, I guess, a area chair and asked him for, um, this uh, came about, a uh, citizen had a complaint about treating uh, their property with pesticides and we did a follow-up. Um, I'd have to go back through my notes and tell you the very specifics about a uh, year, year and a half ago. Um, and so he asked us for information. I said we're in the development and he asked what, we, what were we writing? Um, how did well, the True Green does a brisk business in this town. I, I get it. So it, um, how did you determine that it was appropriate to approach private businesses with a draft? By what process did you, did it, did you conclude it was an appropriate next step to approach businesses with, with restrictions on the use of product, their product, on their customers? He actually informed me that they don't treat town property. My question was different. Okay, by, so what by what line of logic, by what process did you conclude it was appropriate? We to talked about it in a meeting, at a board of health meeting, and then okay. she decided to. Okay. John, we did that for we did that for the, um, the tobacco regulations before they were when they were just draft. Uh, the tobacco lady, I always think of her as. Right, um, but I think what's, what's different is the tobacco regs are 
are within the purview of the Board of Health, as we just heard. To pesticides are as well because they cause public health issues. Yeah, Cancer anything that. Uh, They're definitely in our purview. Okay, I need to stop you there. Section one of the Massachusetts Pesticide Control Act says the exclusive authority in regulating the labeling, distribution, sale, storage, transportation, use, and application and disposal of pesticides in the Commonwealth shall be determined by this this chapter. So that, that provision has been interpreted by the court to mean that you do not have any regulatory authority over pesticides. Period. At all, none. So how does Marblehead do it? I, have, I can't speak for what Marblehead does. They don't have as good a town council, perhaps. <laughs> Now, now. Yeah, now, I, now. I even asked them, did they have any trouble I mean, passing through town council? Them. They said no. And it went through did, two years we had it going work, through reiteration. Did, did they work with the Board of Selectmen oh. there? Maybe they work with the Selectmen. I just said I, any public problems I, I, with the town council? This is going to sound snarky, but I have to say it. It, it, it seems, the most, it. It seems it. the most obvious path, if you have a question regarding the town you live in, would be this: the elected officials of the town you live in, not the elected officials of a town some distance I'm not going to reinvent the wheel. I mean, thought we could get something from somebody else who's already doing it. It's fine to get raw in terms, material. In terms of vetting it, though. Mm -hmm. But in terms of implementing it, we've vetted it. We vetted it. Well, that's we've we've seen it several times. But it sounds like it went to execution, not merely a paper. We didn't execute anything. No, we just we've been working on this for two years because somebody, a public citizen, came to us with a legitimate concern about pesticides in her area. So we responded to that because it was a public health issue. Pesticides are a public health issue. Maybe it's not in our purview, but we felt it was important for us to investigate it because it causes cancer. If the board wants to take this over, I think Go we can give it. them all of the information and we can present it to you, and I we, we, really okay, don't care who takes the credit for it. I think it would okay. serve the town if the board does this. That could be a productive future discussion. It would be wonderful yes. if the board of selectmen could do this. Any further questions? I agree. I'm done. Okay. Any okay. right. other questions of the board? We're about an hour and 15 minutes late on this topic. Hearing none? Well, oh, oh sorry. I, 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 I just um, we need to discuss among ourselves my head is swirling and uh, I sort of feel like I wouldn't earn my selectman pay tonight um, if I didn't leave this room with some type of at least a path toward a resolution mm. um, and, and so um, I'm gonna ask the following it appears that your major concern about this whole thing was about an altered document that the person who submitted it initially had no disagreement about the authenticity of what was in that document. Um, and so if that is the sole concern, which had no, basically, um, wasn't disputed by the person who actually submitted it, I don't know that. does that give you, does that, does that give us give you the ability to basically let's do a mulligan and for you to have the comfort of appointing the health agent for the benefit of the town of Reading? What's the question? I'm, 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 what I'm asking is that now that we've kind of gotten sort of dug to the bottom of this. In your interpretation? Um, oh. Well, from just what I saw and, and just the, 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 the questions that you answered, that the major thing was about it, altering a document which the person who actually submitted the document initially didn't dispute her manager um, changing. Basically, she signed off on the changed expense report. Can you now feel, you know, can you now feel comfortable, since that is the, was, in your words, the sole source of why we're all here today, that was, the person who the employee who submitted it had no um, beef or didn't dispute the manager changing it. Do you feel now comfortable, since that issue now is off the table, appointing the health agent at your next meeting? That is, um, they're in that. session now. Or uh, oh, that's right. They're, they're in session. session. You, you have stated that that is all true. I have not spoken to Donna Pierce about that, nor have you, as you said. So well, someone said her, that her letter does her not supervisor supervisor her letter does not say 
that. But, but it seems okay. like to find Her letter does not say that. I'm addressing you, Barry. Her letter does not say that to me. Her letter gives me that complaint. Jane? So I'd like to speak up for management. Um, I have an open door policy. As the department head, there are disputes that go on all day long. Not at any time did I even know there was a problem, an issue, a concern. And this is small and trivial, and the person ended up quitting and giving us no notice, just right. walking off the job, essentially. Is that true? That is true. Yes, that did, is correct. Did she give notice, uh, no like notice. a two weeks notice? No, no. nothing. No. She gave nothing. So she left in bad standing. She wrote a handwritten her. note to HR. As she was walking down the hallway out the door. Laura and I were meeting with John Costigan, at the time, we came back from meeting with the chair to, right. to get excited about our new arrangement and a new health agent. And we learned from HR that Donna handed a handwritten note and walked out. That's what we're talking about here. And did anyone reach out to, to inquire why? Because if you read this, it does in fact seem. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I just asked us, I, I, I'm just I think you was thinking answer. that. You got your There's a way out here, and you uh, asked right. and apparently answered. Any other last minute questions? We are way late. We got a full agenda, and uh, we got to figure out what to do, move on next to. Any other questions? If not, break. We'll take a break. Ray, thank you very much. Thank you to the Board of Health. Don't let them go yet. Um, you guys are still and in session. Yeah, Ray can't go yet. Yeah. Do I get All right, why don't we take a minute just to recompose the room and uh, we'll open the door and get some air in here. We'll be so back this, is this going to, they're staying in session.
Push the source. Oh, you got it. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> Missing one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> so his leg is a lot better than his knee. I'll go through him in All right. sequence, um, but I have very little to say. I think um, Andrew is on his way back. What I'd like to do now. Right. There he goes. Oh, Andy. there he goes. Andrew! <laughs> We're on. Showtime. Um, what I'd like to do now, we're well behind schedule. There's a couple of things we've got to get through. I'd like to return to the discussion we just had, but maybe not this moment. I'd like to first get through the warrants and then maybe um, discuss, after we've had a few, few minutes just to think about it independently, we can have a conversation after that. So, Bob? I'd also uh, like the board sometime tonight, it's not technically an agenda item, but I do have a request for you to sign some documents and approve a loan from the MWRA. Okay, thank you. That Caitlin has that. So please don't leave without doing that. All right. Um, November town meeting is relatively short in a number of articles. There's the standard first three. Um, you need an answer. There's a fourth one to amend the budget. I'm sure we'll have some things right now where we're cutting costs, not adding costs, to my knowledge. Uh, as an example, we had a hundred and ninety thousand dollar capital item for uh, fire. And Greg, through his hard work and his department's got a grant that pays for all but 25000 of that Excellent. for equipment. Oh. So we will be able to, you know, restore 165000 Although, you know, as the fire department is wont to do, they have a suggestion on how to spend 150000 of that, <laughs> you know, which is fair. And that's already in the capital plan. <laughs> we don't yet have any prior year's bills. Um, we don't have any surplus. Those are placeholders. We may or may not. Um, if I had to close the warrant tonight, I'd ask you to include both. There's uh, a specific debt authorization rescission article, um, and then there's, um, and that's for the, a certain uh, approved issue. And then there's a general approach. If you remember what we did with the library project twice on premiums, yep, right. yeah. there is a general method that town meeting can approve in Article 8 that means we never have to do that again, that they've essentially said this is a good method, use it, and they don't have to be asked every time. So that be at the discretion of the board from here on, or just uh, staff? Discretion of the treasurer. Okay. Uh, there's a couple the of. <laughs> oh yes, he's from right Welcome. there, <laughs> and he's very You're discreet. Just <laughs> um, I would like to have a discussion, if not tonight, then soon, with the board about demand fees. They are set at twenty-five dollars by mm -hmm. by town meeting. Um, the treasurer, or in this case, the collector, has no legal authority to waive that. If the amount was $15 or less, then there's a legal authority to waive that. So I want to go into some detail. I don't want to describe it all tonight unless you have time later. Um, we shouldn't rush that. We should get it right. Well, yeah. and I'll highlight that, believe it or not, from demand fees, we collect seventy or $75,000 a year from that alone. And almost all of that is on excise tax bills. Really? Yes. Yeah. Mm. Wasn't there something down the road where, you, where basically you said we're not going to collect it because it costs more for the stamps <laughs> and the mail. We did that for personal property below a certain certain dollar threshold, yes. Okay. But these, you know, they're 25 plus whatever the original tax was, okay. um, plus penalties and in, uh, in interest, rather. Um, I have a memo uh, about to come to you from the town clerk. It's somewhat of a similar issue. Right now, the dog license late fee is a monthly. There's an early... I think it's a 25 or maybe it's actually a $50 bump imposed by town meeting when something is 30 or 60 days late. But then the language reads, and $10 per month, or maybe it's five forever after. Mm. The forever after is really a big problem, <laughs> administratively <laughs> and, <laughs> and such. So we're going to uh, suggest a change, and I, I don't know if the whole change has to go to town meeting. I don't think so. I think the board can, can set that. But I want to give you some more background. 
Uh, demand fees and dog license late fees are two of the largest issues that the finance department has now that there's no more complaints about the water bill discount. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. By the Next way. thing in line comes up. There's a couple of bylaws. I'll let Ray speak to some of them. The first one is, I guess I'll say housekeeping, just to keep our bylaw in line with state law to reduce a fine from $300 to $100. Um, we would like to discuss with the board um, either, you see there's 212A and 212B, either amending a general bylaw or deleting it entirely and replacing it with a FinCom policy. Um, September 20th, if time allows FinCom after the financial form, they're going to take this up with, with Sharon. Um, from my understanding of the situation, I think deleting the general bylaw is preferred, and I'll let our procurement folks sort of describe that to you as to why. Um, Matt and Ray have worked on Article 13, and I'll just describe it as, I, you said 17 earlier tonight, I don't know, maybe it's 17 or 18 individual pieces that could either be done one at a time or gathered into one article. Um, one of my only concern in putting it as one article, which is the discretion of the moderator, is does that make the whole general bylaws effectively open for debate that night? Or is there only 18 small specific pieces? So the, so the answer to that question is if it's one, if, if it's one article, it's still going to have 17 or 18, whatever the number turns out to be, subparts. And these, to, to be clear what these are, these are, yeah. these are um, amendments to bring the bylaw uh, terminology in line with what's in the charter that we just you know, revised. Mm -hmm. These are not substantive changes, but they are um, changes that make sense in order to, so we can read the two documents together. You know, lawyers don't like to ever see um, different term used here from the term that's used over here because the, if you used a different term, you must have a different meaning, right? And then, so okay. th these are, this is an attempt to reconcile the bylaws to the, the charter, uh, the charter to make it consistent. So if you do it as, as one article, it will be to amend this section to, you know, to strike the word um, uh, general uh, and, and replace it with zoning. This kind of thing. Um, if you do it as, uh, and so we'll have a whole bunch of subparts, which if I were the moderator, and I'm not, uh, I would say we want to vote on each one separately. Um, if you do it as separate articles, obviously, instead of having 15 or whatever you've got here, 15 articles, you're now up to 30 <coughs> some articles, and it seems longer, and you'd still vote on each one separately. But um, that's completely up to you. Yeah, sure. Is it moderator's discretion, or does, does town meeting have to approve to divide the question? The, um, the, the, um, uh, the moderator can do it on their own, or town meeting can vote to do it. Okay. Which trumps? <laughs> that's a good question. Well, the moderator <laughs> can call, but the town meeting can trump. The that's right. Yeah, the town meeting can so. vote. He can overrule the moderator. He can overrule the moderator. <laughs> that's certainly true. Yes. So they have the right to divide the question. Right, and what I'm saying is that the the moderator can do it as part of his discretion as well. And um, uh, and if he did it, the time he could vote to overrule it, I suppose. Yes. So to but pick to pick up on Bob's point, I think the concern we'd have, at least I would have, is while it's open for uh, trivial and administrative changes, yeah. I'd like to minimize the amount of that's right. and anticipated and surgery. And I don't think that, uh, uh, you know, because we're not going, so I'm always very careful to write um, articles. articles as narrowly as possible to avoid that. But nothing so would stop somebody from standing and making a motion to change something within the same sentence. Maybe. Only the sentence. Well, I mean, because it, and, and really, it, in most of these cases, it's going to be to delete the phrase, you know, X, Y, Z in section 2.2.3 and, and replace it with, uh, with uh, the phrase A, B, C. Oh, I see your point. Your point and is so, the four corners of the motion that's right. dictate only that change. That's right. So, so, there, so there won't be a lot of opportunity. Sometimes, you know, where you run into trouble is where somebody throws up their hands and says to delete you know, paragraph. the whole thing, yeah. you know, some whole chapter or whatever, and replace yeah. it in its entirety with something else. And now everything is fair game. Well, that, that won't happen here. So that if you craft the article, let's say with 
17 or 18 semicolons. Yes. Then each of those sections has to be a narrow four corners. That's right. Well. That's right. And it's only the moderator's discretion as to what that means. That's right. Okay. That's right. And uh, your moderator, and, you know, he, he's, uh, he's, reasonable he, he's pretty yeah. reasonable about that. Um, uh, I don't know that we've, uh, it doesn't seem to me like it's been a big issue in, yeah. in, in the past. You may now tell me some terrible horror well, story sure. that, I, that, that I don't know about, but I think, it, I, I think that's manageable. Okay. It's really just a question of, do you want to just assume that each one's going to be voted on separately, or do you want to to go for having a one vote on all of the changes and hope for the best? Uh, well, seriously, if you have back, you know how long it takes to debate 18 articles. Uh, the, Sometimes they go faster because people want to get them done. That's right. But are the changes? If, if you put them all in one article, then you're able to. Somebody can vote to approve them all in. Well, that there is some evidence to show that the bigger the article, the faster it goes. Sometimes. Yes. <laughs> also, the bigger the budget. <laughs> I was going to say usually that's in, in terms of the dollars. Yes. In the, uh, is it? Is it? Um, are these changes of the sort that are literally change this word to that, or are they? Most of the time, yes. Okay. Yes, I think. All right. Pretty much all of them. Yeah. Grammar. Yeah. All right. All right. Some of them, really. except for the bag, the plastic bag. No, no, th that's a different article. That's a that's different that, article. This is. We're talking about uh, article, article 13, 13 on on the list. Yes. Article 14 is an entirely new. Um, All right. So you're not t talking about lumping. No, no. I'm just talking about whether you want Article 13 to have 17 <coughs> subparts. Votes. Well, 17 subparts, so that, so as to make it possible to have one vote. Or whether you want to throw in the towel on that and make them 17 separate articles, so you have to have 17. Somebody may do that from the floor. That's right. Someone may do it from the floor. I, I, that would not surprise me at all. No, it wouldn't surprise me either. People can still make a people can still make amendments. <laughs> That's right. Thank you. Right. Uh, Always. And Always. you take and you take I, the I amendments up probably as they come. Yeah. Okay. Keep going. You can change your mind. So um, you package them as one. Somebody can make amendments. Sure. If they so if they felt. And, and somebody can say I want to I want to vote on that as a vote. Um, I, I have a question on both 13 and 14. I don't think you need to go into details on the plastic bag bylaw. Matt's done a nice job on that. Um, whether the bylaw committee intends to sponsor those, I wasn't sure. Could the um, climate advisory committee sponsor it? Uh, they do have a Mr. Zeke, I think, is a town meeting. Um, I think the way our charter is written is the Board of Selectmen sponsor articles as, as oh, a sponsor of whatever, whatever the word yeah, is. Would, You've done it for those would, would rather on behalf of But I think the bylaw fun. committee can do it by itself. And FinCom can do it by itself because they're advisory right. to town meeting. Otherwise, you sponsor it on behalf of. Yeah. Um, is there any preference legally? Um, I don't care, actually. No. Okay. We'll, we'll just okay. figure that out. Well, then, then. If that's purely a matter of, of, of you it's know, really decorum. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And the last one, let me call it up. It's um, charter changes uh, requested by petition. So. It was requested earlier today that I send this around to the board, so I did. And in addition to signatures, um, which I won't show, um, here's the um, article. Um, I will add, and, and raise fully aware of this, as is the town clerk. I don't know which petitioners are aware of it. Uh, it's not in good legal form. It needs to change. Signatures will need to be regathered. Um, it shouldn't be a major inconvenience. And the town clerk has a form for charter changes specifically that should be followed. Okay. Uh, question with Ray. Dan. Yes, sir. Uh, Ray, would this require a two-thirds vote at town meeting to pass? It will require a two-thirds vote at town meeting. Will it also be required to be approved by the uh, voters at no. the next election? No, because um, you're not, um, well, that you're not proposing to change um, the uh, um, the way that any members uh, uh, and uh, board of selectmen, school committee, town manager is appointed okay. or elected. Okay. Um, and um, I forget if the town clerk is on that list as well. But but there's a limited number of things that that can only be done in in um, uh, in a particular. 
process that involves a, that involves a ballot question. But these kinds of changes can be can be done without a ballot. So, question. can I make one more point? Yeah, sure. Uh, this is to the petitioner if he chooses to answer. Uh, Bill, as you know, uh, boards of selectmen even before my time have been appointing appointing cemetery trustees, health, conservation, council on aging, historical commission, housing authority, recreation. And since in more recent years, Town Forest Committee, and forever, I think ZBA, as you also know, the voters in town meeting recently adopted, uh, and the voters approved the idea that the board should appoint the board of assessors. And in 1986, like, CPDC became an accord. So, what is the clear and present danger? Since nothing of this kind has been presented in all those intervening years, what's the clear, and what's the reason for bringing this forward now? Quite frankly, I think it's because of the prior discussion of the Board of Selectmen had on the um, Board of Health. And Can you elaborate on that? I don't, I'm not following well, you. Your appointing authority, Dan. Yes. Um, you, if you will, hold an axe over these people, or whatever you want to call it. And I don't feel that that should, power should be best in just one board. The retaliatory, if you will, is also investing in people by not reappointing people. Well, did you consider the idea that if you, you have a chair of a committee yeah. sitting on that appointing board, you think the committee members are going to do what that particular member wants them to do a little bit more if, if their appointment depends on his vote? I mean, yeah. I don't think you're okay. getting out of that. Plus, I want to know if this has been discussed with the moderator. I, I have not. You might be interested to know that I spoke to Jeff Beckwith uh, today at the MMA. Yes, I know. He is not aware of any other town or you know entity in the state that is doing this. And he found it, and I'll quote him, highly irregular that a sitting chair of a board would be in a position to appoint his or her board. So I'll offer that. And I, I would also further state that uh, in Bob's report tonight, uh, he noted that uh, Matt uh, Cornelis has been working diligently with the bylaw committee to get these changes together that we just discussed. And they're also working on the 10 year review of the charter as mandated uh, and may be ready to present those suggestions uh, within the next year. Why not fold this into those recommendations given that it looks like you haven't vetted this with anybody? Uh, that, that would be a good idea. Thank you. I would you consider, consider withdrawing this and doing that? Uh, I will withdraw it. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, they ever want to cause trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Beware of the law of unintended consequences. Yes, I know. All right. Um, <coughs> ten after ten. We're way off schedule. Um, we need to get together to talk about the events of earlier this evening. Um, what's the board's appetite to meet on September 5th? What's the folks' availability? I think we've got a situation that demands it. Yeah. So that's the Tuesday after Labor Day, right? That's the Tuesday. Yeah, next Tuesday. tonight. Monday's the... Oh, Jesus. Yeah. So you're proposing an open session? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the other... Yeah. Who can make you it? You available, Andrew? I think so. I just shut up. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. I'll check I am. Yeah. You are? I mean, okay. Right. I mean, th this thing tonight, it, I mean, we've got major responsibility and culpability as the Board of Selectmen of this town, both to the citizens and to the protection of the town from any number of potential liability situations, in my opinion, just on the outside looking in. And I think we've got to get to the bottom of this. Yeah, I, d I don't agree, John. I sat on the Board of Health for five years, and uh, I don't think there's, uh, uh, I, I think, I know, I know you guys are angry about this and 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 I respect that but it's I, not anger it's not anger it's not anger it's not anger okay please don't anger. don't, don't characterize don't. it so that so way. words in in, in my okay. mouth at least um I don't I I I do not think that uh public health is at as at risk nor do I think the situation is as one-sided as it was uh Played out this evening. Well, I mean, we had, I mean, we, I they were here for two hours, and that. you know, Ray asked a lot of <coughs> questions. I mean, I appreciate that they were here for two hours. Yeah. And, uh, 
uh, un unless there's more that was not uncovered, it, 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 it came down to an issue of um, human, human, you know, human resource. resource management. And, yeah. you know, um, we gave them an opportunity <laughs> many times. I, I know I tried to give them a door to walk through. Um, so, you know, it, it, whether the public health is at risk or not, I mean, that's a matter of discussion. Yeah. Um, ultimately, we are responsible for the public health in this town, um, as we are for public safety and everything else. So, you know, I, I would like to I would like to discuss a path forward, and you know, and and you know, figure out how to get this resolved. And yeah. So I, sooner I, rather I, than later, yeah, I agree. Um, I'm free on the field. So, what's the know. appetite? To, we're already kind of into it now. What's the appetite to try to spend a few more minutes here versus to vote a whole other evening to it? I don't know. There's so much on here that I wanted to learn and talk about, and, yeah. and I'm and my head's spinning. Um, I, I need to. I, I know I, I can need to forward kind of some of those emails to everybody. I can't do it right here. It's not letting me do it. But I'd be happy. Anything that is not privileged between people, I, I can okay. forward to you. Anything yeah. that's in the public well, record. Should that come from Bob though? I mean, I could do it through Bob. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think it's coming to that. Bob, and then yeah. I'll. And he can but, tell me if it's John, good or not. And I've asked for them to send me one document I did okay. not have or the town yeah. reason. Yeah, yeah and I guess that's where I'm coming from. I really want to see the document that sure. was sent by the Board of Health to Laura. Um, yeah. um, that's I've not seen very that. curious to me. I mean, there seem to be a lot of things here. You mean the notice to appear at the... Oh, it, yeah. Well, I, I mean, it, you know, it was... It, it spoke about the invitation to discuss... Right. Um, was it under number one? Yes. Okay. Well, yes. I'm very interested, you know, I don't think that was vetted with you before it was sent. Oh, no. No, this is vetted. Did they ever call you, Ray? Did they ever ask you for advice? Um, uh, well, the, an the answer to that is no. I understand, because they just told me that, um, that they had made requests mm -hmm. to would contact me. They need to go through channels. channels. Right. Um, and at least their understanding is that those requests were denied. I'm not sure what those requests were. What exactly I, the so I, right. I never um, saw just, 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 just um, the Besides the, uh, the public health discussion itself, I think the thing that, um, by the way, I do want to say one positive thing. This is going to sound a little odd, but I, I do mean this. I do like individuals who stick to their guns yeah. and defend Who's themselves. That? And yeah. I think that's an admirable quality. And it's also clear that the, the process has been thought through and in, in their minds it's logically oriented. And I really admire that, that stick to itness. I, I don't agree with it, but I admire the, the just the force of the argument they bring to the table. And, and you could imagine under a different set of circumstances where that would be really necessary, I believe. Um, the thing that concerns me is what I'll call business protocol. Separate and distinct from the operational aspect of health is, is the organization working as it should? Is there good chemistry between individuals? Is there good dialogue? Is the process reasonable? Are people behaving for the betterment of the organization or is there what I call malicious obedience? Well, you didn't tell me to do it, so I didn't do right. it. And you didn't tell me to dot the I, so I didn't dot the I. And I get, I get the sense here that there's a little bit of uh, more than a little bit of friction, more than a little bit of disagreement, more than a little bit of um, we can't work together as a team. And that's the thing that can be cancerous in an organization. That just crawls through an organization if it's not dealt with because it sends a action. Failure to take action sends a message. We've been informed tonight, and I think we've got to discuss it. And the other question is um, in what form and at what time. So if, so much to if there's um, no other comments, I'd propose that we meet on the 5th for this topic and whatever else might leak out. Yeah, we're going to have some leftovers yeah, here. There's probably going to be some stuff here we don't yeah. get to because yeah. it's all right. I don't want to stay here two more hours. All right. I'm yeah. fine with it. All right, good. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Um, next topic. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. Uh, you should ask John. Do you want me to plan to attend on the phone? I would think it wise, given the history and circumstances. Is there a way for you to check your phone? I just did. I did check the job. That's fine. Good job. I would actually feel. Yeah, I think it's really yeah. important. First time in my business. Yeah. yeah, I can do it. I mean, just tonight, separate and distinct from the qu queries, the response to um, questions and assertions mm -hmm. has been helpful. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
I can do it. It's fifth is free. So is it is it appropriate or inappropriate for us to? I mean, Barry made a comment that I thought was a wise one. You know, that, that is, you got to kind of stand back and try to gather information mm -hmm. based on what you hear tonight. I mean, it seems to be up. Oh. Um, yeah, I was going to say to to that end, if any of you have questions or need more information, please let me know, and I'll let Ray know or whoever else would be necessary. <coughs> So the documents we're waiting outstanding are, I guess, tonight's minutes. That's one, right? Yep. From their concurrent meeting. Is there anything else we're waiting for? Uh, Ray, letter one thing. to Laura. Letter to Laura is two. Ray, I would appreciate a reading from you in maybe the form of a memorandum as to how valid you believe these executive sessions were. Should they have been called? Were they called for proper reasons? Seems like the first one was called to talk about schedules. I don't get that. Uh, this may be a training issue for that board. They, they don't know what they can do and can't do. But I'm, I'm concerned that they seem to like lawyer shopping. They'll go around to a lawyer that'll give them the answers they want to hear rather than go to you. And I, I don't think you're inaccessible either. I, I know you're not. That's, I don't think that's fair. And I, and I don't fair. want to spend the town money on exploring why a board went into executive session or not, personally. I, I mean, unless I can be convinced otherwise. Well, I want to know if it's valid. I'm not saying it's going to factor into whatever I decide. Yeah, I mean, there's... You, yeah, you can call the state an, and ask the state. No, we have our attorney here. But you want to render an opinion right here and now? Let me make sure I understand your question. You want to know if the reasons stated yes. were had merit and, and were aligned to the purpose of executive session? Especially the second and third, right? I'm pretty sure the second first and third meeting? Executive sessions okay. on the 8th and the 15th. Um, the, the state will answer the open meeting law. People will answer that question for free. Nothing against <laughs> Ray. Um, he's here. He's free. But you can call them, and they're, they're pretty helpful. It's not free, he's available. Yeah. Yeah. All right. is, is that time reasonable? It's okay, or is, that, is this an area that's fuzzy? Um, it? Well, it seems like I've given this piece of advice in three or four contexts in the last two days. My recommendation is never to seek legal advice from the state. Need legal advice, that's why you hire me and you should mm -hmm. go to me. Many times we turn around and, and call the Attorney General's uh, office and we have relationships that we maintain yep. for that purpose, not just not just the Open Meeting Law Division, but, mm -hmm. but the Municipal Law Unit and like the Secretary of State's office and the Department of Revenue. And sure. Um, the only way I can vouch for the the advice that you're getting is if I know what the question is, if it's been asked, and, and who it was answered. asked to, and, how, and what the answer was. So I mean, Nancy so couldn't even remember who she had asked at the uh, attorney so office. We, so here, you know, here's the issue. She says, and I'm sure she believes it to be true, yeah. that she posed these questions to these two attorneys, and she got answers. But, but uh, I don't know what she told those attorneys, and I don't know what they said. In response, I know what she heard, mm -hmm. and um, there's, so there's a real quality control issue there. So yep. um, I, I know I, I, I know it involves um, you know I'm not free, and, and, and the attorney general is free, but I think on uh, on it's worth many what you matters, pay for it's, it. it's mm -hmm. worth <laughs> yeah, it's worth making sure that the questions are um, uh, are posed properly. Right. That all of the information and is there's a paper trail to those, and those questions. Yeah. And then, and then you know right. what, okay. what you're dealing with. So, um, so sorry to disagree. And, and I'm looking at, uh, proactively at this for potential training of boards. Okay. The do's okay. and don'ts of its executive session. Okay. Yeah. So, so um, as much yeah. as anything, I want to hear. Your okay. Answer. So we, we okay. actually have a traveling road road show on mm -hmm. on oh, uh, no. meeting law okay. that we're glad to set up for boards. Um, you know, we, absolutely. We, we okay. Can, Matt's gone. Okay, but you know we can we okay. can work on setting up a time. And, and, uh, so, so, uh, so by Tuesday, would we have those three documents? Your view of the meritorious nature of calling so, for open for executive session, and then the Laura's note and the minutes from tonight. Would that be likely or unlikely? I guess I'm looking okay. at both of you at the same time. When you say minutes from tonight, what exactly do you mean? So the the board of health met for I don't know half an hour, forty five minutes in the next room. Okay. 
Okay. I thought they said they weren't ready to release executive session minutes, which yeah. is what that was. Oh, I didn't realize. They, they approved them, but they haven't authorized their release. I didn't realize that was an executive posted? session. That yeah, it was, it was properly okay. posted. Okay. So I now understand. They, okay. they voted yeah. to approve, as I understand yeah. it, they voted in executive session, which is the right way to do this, to approve the minutes of the other executive session. Now, I do believe that they said that the, the first one. The no, I believe the it's first, first one, one yes. that they are ready to release. The, the, the one involving scheduling. So let's get okay. that one. So, um, um, as far as. the legal opinion you're asking me to write. Um, understand that I will caution you that it is an attorney-client communication and is, and I would um, caution you against, really, uh, against making it public. So if that changes what you want me to do, you should know that. Um, I'll defer to my board members. I'm, I'm okay with that. I, I don't think it's material. Yeah. Yeah. I think what you saw is what you what you got. Okay, so the All point right, is, if, fine. if you're looking for an opinion, that yep. then you then you're gonna yeah shop it put, around. Put it All into right. the mix of, of your of your discussion. I would ca caution you against doing that. Yep. I think it was sketchy personally, but I'll just keep that belief. Right. So let's let's something let's, I wouldn't do. Let's okay. belay right. that request. Uh, so, right. Belay that. Okay. And the, the other thing, you know, and again, maybe you already answered this tonight, um, is just, um, you know, what are our options? I mean, well, we talked, we talked about the, yeah, I mean, you, it happens that you have an empty seat. Right. There's that. So, uh, and you, you know, you have solicited um, uh, applications for that seat. Right. Um, I, you know, I don't know anything about who this was on TV I, tonight. Okay. Yeah. And don't be so surprised that you wouldn't have a application or more okay. by tomorrow. Okay. So, are you so, is the vast meeting in advance? Uh, we should well, we some. didn't. Um, we don't have anything scheduled. Although there isn't there. There was something. Um, we need to do a cemetery. Uh, yeah, cemetery. If you're going to meet okay. Tuesday, maybe the vast yep. meet at six thirty Tuesday. If, yeah. you're available. if we have applications. And, and if you're watching out there, CPDC <laughs> Conservation <laughs> <Yes>. Commission. <laughs> Okay. And who else? Bylaw committee. Bylaw committee. There are open seats. There are Please. Like and plenty of free, plenty of free parking. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Look under the camera. Um, so if the concern is that is that it is, um, yeah. Um, when you when you are making appointments, you're certainly free to ask questions of what would you do in this situation. Yeah. And and what have you. So you have. I mean that. That is one thing that you, that one power that you have that you haven't really talked about. The other, obviously, is, is the more drastic, uh, uh, the more drastic authority. Okay. Right. One is proactive, one is reactive. Right? Yeah. Okay. I'll go over that. All right. What are, uh, nothing yeah. else? I'm sorry, Bob? Um, I do feel obliged to say one thing. I'll respectfully disagree with Andy that we are holding on to two employees barely right now. The two health agents. Um, out of Bob Bracey's kindness, he has not resigned in yeah. order to do his full time job in Reading. I can't promise you how long, much longer that's going to last in all candor. I just can't. So I appreciate you having this discussion tonight and meeting so quickly next week. This is important. You know, we're doing the best we can, but only do so much. Okay. All right. um, thank you very much, Ray. We'll see you on. Yep. Tuesday night. Tuesday. Yeah, thanks, Ray. All right. Uh, next topic is. Very uh, informative. Thank, you. Thank, thank you very you much. Sunday. Thank you very much. Next topic is senior tax relief. Bob, did you have a prepared material? Thank you. It was a page or two in the, in the handout on Thursday. Yeah, I also wanted to point out I should have done this as my liaison report. As part of your packet, um, Selectman all um, asked for assignments to different working groups. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that is in your packet. John yep. Arena looked at it, asked me a couple of questions. Um, one of the solutions was honestly to have two selectmen at almost in all of these. 
It's easy to balance out and it helps. I can't remember if I gave, I don't think I gave a score for it, but Barry, you did the best in terms of your request. In terms of oh, my request or how many I got? No, in terms of your request. <laughs> you, you got your That's Christmas right. list, yeah. I think. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I appreciate that. Um, if the board considers this final, now that it's published, I'll circulate it to departments because um, some staff is very anxious to get this. Thank you, Ray. Thanks, Ray. Thank you, Ray. Have a good night. Yep, thank you. Go ahead, Bob. Um, there's a memo in your packet from um, Victor Santanelli, our assessor. Um, I'll just read it. 5D. Oh, this one. 5D. Yes, 5D. In the sorry. Um, as of August 22nd, which is just a week ago, he had received 143 applications, and about half of them had been reviewed, uh, and almost all of them had been approved. Um, re recall that the Board of Assessors is the one that has to review and approve them. Staff gathers information, gathers more information, vets it, but the Board of Assessors, which does not meet every week, then has to approve it. So they approve like on a rolling basis. So yes. they get them, they look so they at will them. meet as they need to in order to meet your fall schedule, certainly. Um, but again, I'll go back to uh, you know, last, last fall. We didn't know how many applications we get. Um, there was a slight possibility it could be as high as 600. We kind of knew it wouldn't be, and we knew that they wouldn't all be approved. Um, 143, or let's say 140 if, if approved, is on the low end of what I would have guessed. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, the board will then, um, you know, it's your call exclusively to decide what to do with that information. Mm -hmm. Um, the home rule petition allowed a range of exemptions from I think it was half to double right. the senior tax uh, circuit breaker number um, and then there's a tax implication as to how much you shift the rate if you're going to shift it onto businesses to yeah. prorate it or whatever so you know my comment is the process has worked very well um, staff has worked well they have not been swamped thank goodness in mm -hmm. a way we have publicize this about every way we can think of, but I will tell you that you got an email sometime mm -hmm. in the last couple of days Somebody that, wanted, that yeah, we nice. already responded to. Thank so you. there are still questions Good. out there. Thank you. And the deadline is very soon. I think they informally said next week, early next week. So can we... So can there, there will be a time in which it? there's a deadline right. that cannot be changed. For this year. This is the we'll first try to work year. with people, it sounds like. We will. It's yeah. up yeah. to the board of assessors. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, no matter where you snap the line, you're going to have folks right. over. Yeah, so right. you can't ever cure this. But problem. we had six. We you, we thought 600 were at 143. We knew a lot of them wouldn't qualify because yeah. they're renters. Over 600 was the upper. I might have guessed 250 if you right. ask me. Yeah. So the fact that it's brand new, yeah, and you know, people might not have you know understood it right away. Yeah. Well, know. it could also be, and we discussed this. I remember last year, certainly Victor and I did. Um, it could be that people didn't file the circuit breaker form with the state because they didn't feel it was economically worth their while, but that would then make them eligible for this program. So if they didn't know that last winter when they did their taxes or last spring, they're not eligible now. Right. Right. Um, if they look back and said, you know, geez, it was only $400, but it really would have been worthwhile because I might have also got $800 off of my real estate right. taxes. Next year, you might see that. See more. And you remember when we talked with Victor, and, you know, this was before yeah. it came out to all of us, Bob, you and I, and Victor spent a lot yeah. of time talking about this. 600 was the upward number. I think we and said 253. Yeah, more typical. Well, because there was a few things that came into play. Right. One of the things, renter. Right. Another thing, 10-year resident, you know, 10-year homeowner. Doesn't have to be the same house, but, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, you know, so there was a series of things that were going on there. You know, one of them would be I didn't file this right. year because I didn't know that it was going to have an implication for me. So, uh, you know, it's not shocking that, you know, the number is smaller and there's still time. Um, also, too, if they have the house in a trust and they may name yeah. a couple of people other than themselves as trustees. <coughs> that well, I mean, the trust thing is, is, is common. Right, especially... You know, I mean, a lot of people are doing... For estate planning purposes. Yeah, they're doing estate planning, and yeah. you know they're they're doing some Medicare planning, Medicaid planning. I mean, you know, they're they're the nursing home thing, and they're bombarded with on the airwaves about you know come and see us, and you know the answer yeah. is trust. Give the see kids or, or put in a trust. Or put in a trust. Right. I mean, it's it's not uncommon, and it's not illegal, and it's not. Right. It's, it's, yeah. it's, not, it's, it's irrational behavior. But at a certain point, you've got to draw some lines. Yeah. yeah. Um, Bob? Um, first of all, no matter what we do, we're going to miss someone. Correct. There's no question about that. 
Um, secondly, what we can't predict is what behavior will change in the future because right. this is available. The form is one of them. The behavior with trust is another. Um, financial advisors have no idea what this option is. My guess is doesn't this change. doesn't move that needle, but no. it may in some instances. We don't know. Well, I, the needle that may move is the state. I mean, you right. remember as this was making yeah. its way through the state house, there were a lot of people who looked at this and went, yeah. Is this there, is a pretty good isn't idea. there a bill that you know, deals with this? Um, well, there's, there's been some discussion. There's been some discussion about whether or not, you know, a model very similar to ours finds its way into the state statutes. One question I have for Victor is if, if the beneficial interest has, in being, has to be in the name of the resident, is there a minimum beneficial interest that they have to have? Could it be 1%? Could it be 2% and still trigger it? You know, if you've got your I don't know. That's a good question. It's technical. It's a technical beneficial yeah, ownership. Yeah, I would think that. I don't know. Substantial to get this back. I mean, you know, to have a no. one percent beneficial interest, we don't want to. Yeah. No, but they'll give a thousand dollar tax cut. Well, no, but none of the language describes it yet. Is that that's what I'm pointing out right. a potential loophole? Right. Yeah, I don't know what the legal definition of a beneficial interest in the property means. Is that up to the board of assessors to interpret? It could be. I think it could be that they're that they're that they're a manager of the trust. You know, they have a. Mm -hmm. It could be that they, you know, who, who basically makes the decisions. Yeah, I think that I think that's a new be beneficial be interest. Yeah. Well, it would go to their estate. I would read that as upon their death that that portion of the ownership and the property would go to their estate, whereas right. the rest of it would pass directly through the trust to the beneficiaries. So it doesn't have to be managerial. I don't. I'm not, this, I don't know anything yeah, about this. I don't know. I mean, that could be another. You thing. know, I, I think it's safe to assume that when we enacted the or town meeting enacted this a year ago that, you know, that we wouldn't have to make changes to it a year or two down the road. No, I mean, I, it's just yeah, you know, from learning. I wouldn't. Uh, let's see how it runs next year. Yeah. It's you know not bad for. I was just gonna say. I mean, the good news is you've got 140 folks that are going to get between 500 and 2,000 dollars of tax yeah. relief, right. and it's the folks that, if you will, need it the most. And the average is about a thousand for. Yes. <clears throat> all that money is being well, shifted. Well, that's, that's yeah. what their average circuit breaker is. Then you do the multiplier, either half of that or double that. As right. And then we can just decide, dance. like, how much money do we really want to spend right. with the idea that, well, if we give a lot, and if, let's say we go to the max, and now next year we have 240 because yeah, everybody right. figured it out. I think you start low and ratchet. Yeah, as opposed to start out and yeah. say, well, you gave me 1,000 last year, I only got 500. Yeah. You think I don't just want those calls. Yeah, <laughs> you know? I don't want those calls. It's, well, right, right, right. You can give me. Right. So, of course. The but, other piece yeah. of this, too, though, that we have to consider is, I'm not proud. you know, if an override comes into play, and it may, then, you know, next year you, you think about, yeah. you know, more relief for those at highest risk. Correct. So, right. you know, you start lower now. Anything is a plus. Would you agree, Bill? Yeah, Mike. Of course. And I think, I think most people would. Um, and then, if the tax situation changes, then we have to we have to adjust to that. Right. And to, just to clarify, Bob, I, the one thing that you mentioned in your remarks, wherever this settles, keeping parity between businesses and residents has always been one of the things that we've talked about, yeah. which would be cause for a split in the tax rate. But, you know, then, of course, that discussion could open a whole another whole can of worms. But the reality is, and I think the business community is clearly aware of this, the way this thing was built, it could only go on a resident, the shift would yeah, be right. residentially. Correct. So in order to maintain parity, you'd yeah. have to have some, Offset some split, up. which, you know, we would calculate. So are we going to, um, <clears throat> do we... Vote on this the same time we actually set the tax rate. This is so. This is basically another thing that we have to do on in November, basically. Yes, yeah. um, October, November. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I would suggest, um, given the goal assignments, you two are on the hook. You, know, you should plan to meet with Victor and I and anyone else you'd like to to have a thorough discussion before it goes to the full board. Whatever yeah. that Wait, means. Which two? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I will tell you right up front, that that one, one request from the assessor is not to pick a crazy number. So make it a nice round number. Right. 101, 102, right. whatever right. it is. Right. Don't go 16 decimal points. Right. Right. Oh, right. Have fun. Go 16. <laughs> um, Pie. Uh, I'm oh, sorry. Pie. Just a very quick question. Um, you said those two are on the hook for that. Uh, how does the process work for the other goals? And will, will 
like John and I are in a couple where we get looped in by yeah, four. staff. Staff. That's why I need to be able to tell staff. Right. right. No, no. They're they're all different, but generally speaking, you'll hear from staff. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Sorry. Not to belabor the point, but if it's literally a, a 92 to 8 split and you've got a 1% on the residential, I think you need one eighth of 1%. So you're going to need a couple of extra You're splitting the hairs. You're going to need, you're you gonna need a, a couple of extra digits. <laughs> but enough said. Um, uh, that's all I have. Any other questions? No. Okay. Library, uh, uh, that's quick. I right? wrote you a memo that's yeah. fairly yeah, self explanatory. That's great news. The, the library project's mm -hmm. in great shape. It, it did not yeah. cause, you know, it's a lot of pain along the way. Trust mm -hmm. me, this is the most difficult thing I've been involved with since I joined here. I, I um, do think the, the assistance to Joe Huggins, oh, yeah. the town yeah. manager, um, um, Bob Lebrecht, um, the yeah. building committee, um, it's taken a long time. Barry's involvement is, is uh, a yeah. liaison. It's um, it's also, I think, testament to good planning and spending the money up front to do planning. Uh, I've got agree. a great building. And I think the most important thing is my last paragraph where I can tell you in the community we did it right. Right. Um, we didn't authorize the, the project. We didn't choose the location. But once those choices were made, we did it right. Um, and no one in the future is going to be able to take apart that building and say they cut a corner that I'm aware of. Um, we had many, many opportunities to do that, okay. including, if you remember, the second override. I do. Or second, yeah. Yes. Dead exclusion. Dead exclusion. Triple waterproofing, I believe, and yes, one we did. On yeah. One of them, we did three things. Yes. There were two, probably. Actually, one might have been. Close. I'm going to propose we defer demand okay. fees, mm -hmm. train mm -hmm. depot, and the survey mm -hmm. until. That's my uh, thinking too. Actually, you know what? Can, can, we, can I just ask? Can we a do question? the survey just because I'm, I'm? I don't know. What, I don't have much to say. Oh, oh, oh let, let me just ask you: well, Is um, we need to figure out reviewing we're the cut train it off. depot compost stick or something you want to do as a board? Yeah. Because yes, we, yes. the police need to order stickers yeah. within 30 or so days. Right. For yes. You. Okay. Yeah, so we need to put that on the September agenda, and I'll have the police chief. I'm fine to do it the fifth. Just move it to the fifth. Yeah. We've only got one item on the agenda. Let's go do it. Okay. So we'll put the man fees, train, and uh, We can do that. And the survey, survey update, I, I couldn't print out a document yeah. uh, to give you. Um, there were two periods of activity. There's virtually no replies in the last week or so. Right. Very low, mm -hmm. other than paper surveys that were Can you guys cross-tabulate the results? Well, maybe you don't have to cross-tabulate. Cross do yeah. we know how many? Yeah. Uh, over 2,000 oh, okay. um, were we started. Been, we would have been happy at 600. Something like 85% yeah. of them were completed, so you have not quite 2,000 <coughs> responses. What's the yes on override versus no well, hang on, override? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Don't go there yet. you got to tab the data because otherwise right. it makes yeah. no yeah. sense. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Yeah. What do you mean? No, like, the number is important, though. Yeah. I mean, it's good to know that we have that Yeah, you've got, that I don't know, 1,800, 1,900 responses. Of those answering yes, the response was this of those answers. Exactly. You know, we right. need to he, see that. Yeah, he will. We'll, yeah, so but next, yeah. next week. What, what did you mean? Oh, I don't think you'll have that next week. That's going to no, take that, some time. Yeah. Did you put it in there? The well, survey's the, still going. My question uh, is. The, the other really thing, we need to figure off. out when we want to cut it off. I would shut it off. Yep. Soonish. Maybe mid September. I was going to say Feb 15. Only I mean, because yeah, 15. you need time to tabulate it, and we'd love to have the results right. by the first financial forum. Well, then you've got to shut it off sooner because that's September 20th and we can't turn around in a week. It's too much. <coughs> so well, you said there was no activity off. this week. Maybe tonight we shut shake it off it. the 5th or 6th next well, week. Well, part of it, you got to go back to school. There are people that you got to get them what? through Labor Day. you got to get I, them I agree. back from vacation. And what do we do with the 5th? Or well, at the end of that week. Or, or how deeply into next week they can go and Correct. Open their that's the way to think of it. The, yeah. go to the end of the week next yeah, week. That's that fine. Would yeah, that's fine. Right. Okay. So then we can just issue last, I mean, basically a last, last call, call on yeah. this. And, okay. Um, yeah, that's a good idea. What did you mean when you said 85% were complete? The best are in suspense, waiting for somebody to push send? <laughs> well, I know I tried answering it twice just to see if it would stop me. They didn't answer all didn't. the questions. Right. So, but so I started a second one and did I not see. complete it. So it's sitting there pending, and you could log no, back it's, in. No, it's not completed, and is it's it gone. By, is it by IP? It's wiped. Pending. Okay. Uh, yes. So somebody could beat the system by yes. going to different computers. You could, there's yeah. plenty of ways to beat the system. There's plenty of ways. Well, yeah. Yeah, but it's going to happen, and it's fine. But there it's are some people yeah, You will find, that. I'm, I'm discouraged <coughs> from the ones I've read, but the comments are the most helpful. Right. Yeah. What is the best way to have the tech, I assume they're textual comments, they're yes. freehand. What's the best way, do you think, to... I don't know. Can we bin them in uh, some Jane way? Jane Miller was here earlier. Um, she has started looking at them and try to categorize them, but 
It's uh -huh. absolutely not. But you get like a flat file out of the system. And you we can, can give you a flat file. You can read all accounts. Do you have any kind of a statistical tool in house that can cross tab? Not on what you usually no. do with variable data is you literally yeah. have the text well, and you try to put it in a balloon that has a general rubric of the title. Right. I was going to say, let, let's say I, I think it's perfectly reasonable that the first cut of data is yes, no, didn't vote. I voted yes, I voted yes. no, I didn't yep. vote. And you have three so tracks. we can certainly have three sets of comments. Yep. Okay. It would be good to see those comments. From those categories, yeah. you have to. Yeah. Otherwise, it makes no sense. So, is Jane the one who's sort of t tasked to do this? Okay. What percentage of responses, off the top of your head, have comments, and which, and which how many don't? Is it 50 50 or more than half have comments? So, people took the time and actually read it and yeah, yeah. good wrote oh, yeah. stuff. That's good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I'm really impressed with the amount of response. Honestly, that, that's a stunning. Two thousand is almost so yeah, out of sixteen or eighteen thousand registered voters. Twenty-five percent. That's why I'm not worried about somebody gaming it. Right, assuming it's a right. There's so many that well, it's not yeah. going to move the needle. Plus, you're sorting so by you answer, so it doesn't. Thousand registered voters. You got eighteen. Mm -hmm. We get yeah. over ten percent. Oh yeah, closer to that ten. Is, it's just it's shocking. Response. Yeah. But, but it tells my, you how important it is. My be. concern, just having talked to a couple of people, looking at the one letter to the other, is that we're, the no's are going to be very underrepresented relative to their prevalence in the override. Uh, but the rat, but the reasons though, those are the, the right. Those are the things that are important. Like why the reasons are good. Right? Yeah, that's that. That's uh, right. I'm just that's hoping why, we get a good. That's why. That's that. why yeah. focusing on the absolute ratio, I think, is a mistake because it gives you. Yeah. A bias one way or the other, for or against, and I think the real answer is in the data. Like, yeah. why did you? Yeah, right. Yeah. People will mistake. Some of the people that would have gamed this will mistakenly believe that that's somehow going to draw an inference to their side right. of the other. It's actually, mm -hmm. it actually, you know, and it doesn't do that. Right. I mean, no, it does it, not. It at really all. gives you the data you need. Right. To deliver information. Um, we should think about another survey, and I say that not even knowing what I would put in it, but I think the answers to this are going to get another round of questions. Maybe. And we, we won't know that until we dive into this and, and right. start working on and it. think yeah. about it. But I would I would like, if you have it by the 20, by the financial forum, yeah. you know, maybe it was by a, the middle of October. Do, do you know it was a question that, uh, that, that, that reading our agenda that I wished we had put on there but didn't? Is do you, do you use um, the train depot parking, <laughs> and how much would you be willing? At what well, point uh, would you be willing? A little bit off the well, no. right? Just to get that kind of. Uh, we kind of know how many people use the train depot parking, right? We have the passes. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah but uh, how many um, spots? Yeah, we don't know how many of them park. Well, you can, we know how many of them park. We don't know how many of them well, buy I, their stickers. I can tell you that we sell about four thousand stickers a year, and that hasn't changed much. It's up or down two, three hundred. And at least 25% of those are for the depot because of when they buy them. Yeah. In the middle and then the there's yeah. the old guy thing, like we all go down to the compost do? and no. hang out. Right. Right. You do? <laughs> well, we're, you know, <laughs> we've got to have something to do. Okay. <laughs> you, my, you have a truck bring my leaf? Sure. Um, we have two more things to do then tonight. I would yeah. uh, like to make a motion to extend the sunset date of the HRAC from uh, the end of August to uh, December 1st. Second. Um, Reason is the group's made some progress. Uh, there is a bit of diversity of opinion, but I'm seeing more progress, um, and I think it's been helpful to be a member of the board and engage firsthand. Um, remember how we got here it was a, a one-year extension, then a three-month extension, and, and, uh, and again, the, the focus here is what is what is the format of this group and, and how is it going to operate within the town of Reading. So are we making our expectations clear as to what we want to see for progress to move To ahead? be honest, Dan, I've been on so much business travel, I yeah. think I've made two of the meetings. So and, okay. I, and they weren't consecutive, so I'm sure the folks lost the train of thought. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but yes, I think in general there's been positive trending. So mm -hmm. this is more formulaic to let the process continue. I, I think that I think you must extend it at least to the end of the yeah. Well, See, we're you want to make it the end of the year or December 1st? Uh, December 1st. Leave it three months. Oh, it's December. Whatever. whatever. I mean, you an extension's needed. They're not going to. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll come at it a different way. Given all the stuff that's going on right now, um, the fact that they've been sort of operating under a cloud of sunset, um, why don't we just extend them? And we'll figure out the rest of it now. Because Barry, they they have expressed an interest in maybe being a different operating group, and so if you extend them, then you have a different problem. Yeah. You know, it's I, I, you know, we've had no problem through the extensions here. I mean, there has been no. There's been no break. There's been. There's been no break. You know, but I, but no I think that if you talk of a break. Yeah. 
they've never been tasked with a more difficult situation in their existence <clears throat> than dealing with all the stuff that's going on now. And they're operating sort of under, you know, uh, under a cloud, under, uh, under the threat or, or the possibility of being sunset. You know, w would I ever vote to sunset them? Uh, I, I think we need them more than ever. But I think without that sort of endorsement from the Board of Selectmen that, uh, you know, they're going to always be a little tenuous and walking on eggshells about what they can do and what they can't do. I mean, more, more than any time ever, at least since I've been on the board or even reviewing this stuff, as a selectman, I need the advice of a, of a human relations advisor committee now more than I've ever done before. And, you know, I just think that if, if we kind of give them, you know, there, there's a, a meeting, uh, Bob, was it October 3rd? Uh, that, was news, that was news to me. Yeah, um, and I don't know how much HVAC played a role in that or not. I, I, I don't, I don't it's know. Just, I think it's clergy and associated. The, it's the clergy, it but is it HVAC? I mean, it said the clergy associate is called for a meeting. I can tell you they have not because they have not met. So I don't understand any of that description. Again, so I, I mean, when I, it's it's eleven o'clock, we're not gonna yeah, I, do that now. We, but we're I, just I just gonna run out of time. So I just so, so my point is, you know, I mean, I'll, I'll vote to. To, to extend them to three months. We really kind of have to put this back up, you know, how many front burners do we have? But, you know, we, we've got to empower this group to get moving um, and to let them know that we as a selectman support their efforts to, you know, give us what we need to do because this whole, the swastika thing is just the, is just the beginning. The whole, you know, People are doing swastikas, it's going to happen. But what, you know, what are we doing to bring people together in town? That's the organization that that we've in, that, that are in our you know that we've empowered to do it, and I don't feel they feel like they've been empowered. So, my only comment on that, and then I'll vote to extend them to February, uh, to December first, is let's get this thing done. Let's go, let let's let them loose and do that what they're supposed to do. So, I, I, I have two two quick. Very quick questions. First of all, can you pass the candy? We <laughs> <laughs> don't want you keeling over that for lack of lunch. The most I was going to ask. I'll jack you right up. New, new yeah. guy's supposed yeah. to bring I need candy. a little. Uh, I need a little. Uh, I can't. It's so much disagree. You know, I can't only disagree <laughs> so much without yeah. chocolate. Yeah, supposed to bring coffee. Um, Supreme Court. <laughs> but so, John, you said that they they want to. They've expressed an interest in becoming something else, and I've heard that well, too. There's Commission. been discussion. Right. There's been discussion. In discussion. So, if I guess my question is this. If we extend them, extend them for a year, and then six months into that, they they say we're ready to become a beautiful butterfly, I, whatever. <laughs> and, and can we then just I heard what you said about the restaurant? <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, true. But you know, but you know, if they if they get to that point where they 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 become something else, they want they they're ready to become something else. We're in agreement, and it's only six months in. Can we then say? Uh, this sort of disband them? Is there anything against that stops As, as a selectman advisory right, committee. Right, sure. right. So okay, you're not becoming someone else, sure. a track's done. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but the recent it. history, Andy, prior to your arrival, is that um, you put the group as advisory to the board. There's been, I think, a variety of opinions what that's meant. And yeah. Yeah, the focus here is to try to sharpen that point. Mm. And what's helped, I know in maybe a, a ham handed way, is to say, look, we really gotta get this done. It, Mr. Halsey says this has been done without breaks, and this is not meant to be anything but you know, we've got to get this done kind of a forcing function. So uh -huh. I don't think it's punitive. I'm not. No, I, I don't. Yeah. All right. Well, let's move. That's I'm fine. happy we to just move cast on. the vote. There's no other function. No, no, yep. no other discussion. All those in favor of the motion. Five zero. Yep. The last topic for tonight is minutes. I move the board of selectmen approve the minutes of July 11th, 2017, as amended. I second. Uh, there was one edit here. Oh, you got oh, stuff to sign. Uh, this one edit on page, um, it's 6A3, page, um, I guess it's 13. 
Um, the sentence says, Mr. Rena noted he does not believe that is accurate. Can you see it? It's like um, one, two, three, four paragraphs from, oh, one, two, three, four, five, six paragraphs in the bottom. The paragraph above it has got a space and it starts with Vanessa Alvarado. Can you see that? Here. Okay. Yep. Yep. So right after that, it says, Mr. Rena noticed he does not believe that's, I, I think what I meant to say, that's not necessary. Okay. That is not the 60% is not needed to gauge the response of the okay. group. And uh, we'll look at, you know, the rest of it's fine. Okay. We have a motion. Um, so all those in favor of the motion as amended. Uh, Mr. Chairman, before we go, uh, Bob's asked me to, uh, I guess we have to do this as a motion. It's uh, the certificate for the town of Reading, Massachusetts, $211,000 sewer bond. I'll read the first portion of it and then ask someone to suspend the reading. We, the selectmen and the treasurer of the town of Reading, Massachusetts, certify that we have signed. Uh, we have a motion to suspend. Um, second. Second. Any, any objection to suspension? Raise your hand if you approve the suspension of the reading. 5-0. Mm -hmm. um, and then the motion itself to approve. What's the motion, Bob? To it was the whole thing, so. Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> move, move the whole thing. Yeah, move yeah. the whole thing. <laughs> We'll have it in a minute. Maybe yeah, it's okay. the hour, Bob. Tell me what a sewer bond does. Um, this is allowing us to legally borrow from the MWRA in their, what it is now is no interest, I and I program. So you then have to, you have to make a motion to accept oh. the borrowing and then you have to sign it. So the bond is the, the vehicle by which you borrow it. Yes. yes. I see. It's really. just like we issued debt. Okay. Same process. Got it. But we're not issuing our own debt. We're just we're basically using the MWRA's using MWRA's debt. That's done through a bond. Their facility. Yeah. Yeah, right. Never heard the term a sewer bond. It sounds like something you do to it fix does. a pipe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And that or would solve or the or restaurant or problem. Too. It's not like or stuff. Yeah. Very bad bond. <laughs> right. Uh, so if you vote? vote on the main motion as as tabled, <laughs> I'd appreciate that. You just voted to suspend the right. Yeah. Well, we're signing here. All those in favor of the main motion as amended. Five zero. Thank you. And I will have this around you guys. You need to all sign. Is it just Isn't one it multiple place signatures? Two, two yep. Okay. Okay. About Are you six of them. For this? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he just jumped right over me. He so just he just loves the dynamic <laughs> interchange. How did you do that? <laughs> oh, <laughs> it gets bad. You jumped this thing right He's over. He's a writing recipe. Right That's here. right. I know that. Three hours. Not for Sat there and did nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay, I'll wait till the end. I'll give it to you. You can I'll be signing you. after you adjourned if you'd like. Can you? Um, yes. I did. Um, oh, you did. Yeah. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn, gentlemen. So moved. Second. I have a second. All those in favor of adjournment. Aye. Aye. We are adjourned at 1055. <laughs>